Chapter 1 You done kicking my ass for the day? Eddie's playful question was one that Travis Holt had received thousands of times over the past few years. His sweaty, breathless friend squinted up at him from the bench press, waiting to be dismissed from their near-daily workout. That's up to you, Travis ribbed, shoving his friend's shoulders. You know I'm training now. So we can take it up to the pro notch if you want. Training for the first time in three years. The past few weeks had felt like both a welcome return to home and a terrible punishment. Training for headlining fights, this was what he'd always done. It was what he'd been used to. But now that he owned a gym and had officially crossed over into entrepreneur territory, most days he doubted that he still had the mojo. I'm going for a run later too, Eddie promised, grabbing for a white towel to wipe over his face. Just so you don't think I'm slacking. A bad breakup about six months before had left Eddie struggling and overweight. Holt Body Fitness was the sacred space for all people looking to improve their self-esteem or get back into shape. Even Travis himself. For the past three weeks his results erupted practically before his eyes, sharpening the ridges of his abs, sculpting the squareness of his shoulders into a hulking silhouette. His MMA injury had sidelined him for almost three years. Now he was showing up to prove he still had it. No ACL tear could keep him away from the title. I'll take it. Travis entered his friend's stats into the gym app they'd started using. Just don't forget to upload your times. It really just depends if Amara needs the car. He groaned as he came to his feet. Common post-workout protests. Amara. Travis didn't look up as he finished entering Eddie's details into the app. Eddie's little sister had moved out east years ago for school. She barely ever came home, and he had almost no memories with her. She's visiting? Or something because mama's been sick. She got in a couple of days ago, says she wants to find a job. Eddie and Amara had always been extra attentive to their mother, even since high school. Growing up, the Valenzuelas had been tighter than a regular family. Something that Travis had always envied. The two sauntered toward the glass doors leading to the main hallway of the gym. The attendant at the door nodded at Travis as they walked by. Well damn, Travis said. That's a big deal, right? Eddie shrugged. Mama keeps telling her to go back to DC. But Amara won't have it because of Mama's diagnosis. She should be able to find a job out here, Travis said. L.A. was the city of angels and miracles if one looked hard enough. Though he didn't know what Amara did, she had to have a shot out here alongside anybody else. And hell, if she doesn't she can work front desk here until she does. Eddie laughed, offering his fist. Thanks bro. Not sure how she'd take that after her hotshot DC career but I'll tell her. They bumped fists and Eddie disappeared into the locker room. Travis stayed behind in the weight room. A couple of newbies in there had postures he wanted to correct, with the daily demands of scaling his business and preparing for his first televised matchup in three years, he didn't have as much time to work with his gym-goers as he'd like. The grunts and clanking of weights were a familiar cadence that normally set him at ease. But today, it just amped up his anxiety. Three years out of the public eye was a long time. And sure, he could train his heart out and wow people with his calves. But did he still have the power to hold his own in the ring? Could he make his old fans care again? Anxiety churned inside him as he helped two of the newer guys with their squats, waiting to make sure they got their form down. Once he saw that all else was fine, he selected two 50-pound dumbbells, raising them over his head and lowering slowly as he watched his form in the wall-to-wall -wall mirror. This upcoming fight was everything. The true chance to re-establish himself as not just a capable fighter, but maybe even a legend. His own silhouettes dotting the upper rim of the walls were a potent reminder to stay focused and fit. The unexpected injury had provided the time and space away from the rigorous training to be able to shift his focus toward a long-term goal, opening a gym. Because he couldn't kick the shit out of people forever, there had to be an end date. But that time hadn't arrived quite yet. 
Both running the gym and winning fights provided the type of attention he thrived on, he lapped it up and transmuted it into something new altogether, a type of high that only pride, money and success could breed. Occasionally, his gaze flitted over to new arrivals in the weight room, a lot of regulars streaming in, a few new faces, lots of beach babes getting into shape in the past few weeks as fall descended on LA. The eye candy and the celebrities were a constant at his gym. One of the many perks of his job, which was all about growing business, making a name for himself, and raking in that profit. The door swung open on the far end, and a new girl walked in. Tight leggings hugging a curvy body, an hourglass on legs with ass cheeks like melons that begged for a squeeze. Travis perked up, all his attention sliding to the newcomer while he finished his set. She wandered the room a bit, squinting around like she was looking for someone. Something about her seemed familiar, but that happened all the time here. In LA, everyone looked like somebody else. But this newcomer needed a personal halt welcome. He let the dumbbells down, exhaling loudly. The girl walked the perimeter of the gym, looking at the machines, graceful neck arcing as she peered up at the ceiling. Damn. He came up behind her. Dark brown nearly black hair swept back into a loose braid that reached all the way down her back. So shiny that it looked like it might be made from black silk. Prowling the sexy clientele was a strict no-no for him, but two minutes in his gym and this girl had him wanting to bend his rules, maybe even break them. He cleared his throat as he neared. Goddamn there you are. Eddie burst through the doors at the far end, looking his way. Travis creased a brow, unsure who he was yelling at. I've been waiting for 20 minutes, the sexy new girl said, throwing her hands up. You said 2.30 asshole. Travis's thoughts screeched to a halt. Jesus Christ. He'd been stalking his prey, Eddie's little sister. His jaw tightened as he fought to wipe the lascivious thoughts, like smudging fingerprints for evidence. Because Eddie would disown him if he found out Travis had even entertained a thought about his sister like that. I was busy. Eddie pointed beyond her, toward Travis. Blame him. He's beefing me up, muscles take time. Amara spun on her heels to follow her brother's finger. She seemed startled when she locked gazes with Travis. What's up, Amara? He nodded at her, smiling slyly. Maybe she didn't recognize him anymore, either. God knows he hadn't recognized her from across the room. The corners of her pretty mouth turned up. Her chocolate almond-shaped eyes made a slow trek up and down his body. Long time no see, Trav. She raised her hand, and they high-fived. You sure look different. Do I? Of course he did. The last time they had been in the same room happened at her going-away party. He'd attended simply because he'd been picking up Eddie on their way to the strip club. Back then she'd been a feisty loudmouth, always yapping in the background whenever Travis called Eddie's house, which already he could see hadn't changed. But that body? He never remembered her looking like this. You could be in GQ. She nodded toward the oversized portraits lining the back wall. Or maybe you already were. Nah, GQ is too classy for this guy, Eddie cracked. Tell her the truth. You were in Playgirl. Travis sent his friend a stern look but didn't say anything else. It was true. He'd been in the magazine last spring, part PR stunt, part unexpected opportunity on the heels of a well-connected gym-goer. His numbers had been consistently growing since. Does that help or hurt your street cred? Amara's eyes twinkled as she looked up at him. Or maybe that answer depends on whether there was full frontal nudity. None of that, Travis said. They did a feature on me because of the gym. Some of those pictures came from the shoot. It sounds like things have been going very well for you. Are you moving back to LA? For now at least. We'll see how it works out. She sighed, gaze drifting across the room. He tried to focus on her face, but his eyes wandered over the caramel skin of her chest and shoulders. She looked soft but solid, and those breasts looked all real, a hard commodity to come by in the City of Angels. Well, it was good to see you, he said. 
She was hotter than hell, but he could never tell her. Not unless he wanted Eddie to pull a knife on him. Stop by sometime and work out with us. It's always on the house for your family. Thanks. I'll take you up on that. She smiled at him, those eyes snagging him again like a fishing line. Fuck. How had he missed this about Amara? Growing up she'd been the shapeless bookish younger sister, studying in the background or doing whatever with her friends. He never imagined she'd be this fully blossomed woman who could knock him over at first glance with those sultry eyes of hers. Come on, let's get out of here. Eddie pushed at her, glaring across the room at somebody. These guys are vultures, Trav. You know that. Travis spun around. A group of guys lifting weights in the corner glanced suspiciously at them. Oh, come on. Amara sighed exasperatedly as her brother led her by the arm. You never change, do you? Who else is gonna look out for you if I don't? Eddie nudged her toward the door. He'd been saying that about his little sister since he was a teen. They don't need to be looking at you like that. Travis couldn't totally sympathize, he'd look at her like that all day if he could. Damn. He ripped his eyes away from her butt, harder than setting down a half-eaten ice cream cone. Every fiber in his being begged to return to that view. Amara shook her head and looked back at Travis over her shoulder. My father and I will see you later. Eddie nodded at him as they pushed through the double doors, flashing him a sideways peace sign. Through the glass walls of the weight room, Travis watched them walk past the front desk and out into the foyer. When they were gone, he surveyed the handful of meatheads. Every single one avoided his gaze. They were part of the group that dosed on a regular basis. Travis had to break them up from infights on more than one occasion, and whenever he got complaints, they usually circled right back to one of these guys. Those beefheads pushed a lot of buttons, especially because they reminded him too much of his younger self. A hothead constantly in trouble with the cops, the whirlwind cycle of dosing and fighting creating new wounds as soon as the old ones scabbed over. He didn't tolerate harassment or fighting in his gym. That was the surest route to getting labeled as trashy or unsafe. And with his goals, he didn't have time for unsavory brutes to drag him down. You know the rules. Travis looked at each of them as he headed for the door. Keep your head down or get the fuck out. The door shut softly behind him and he jogged to the staff room. Keeping tabs on all the potential shenanigans at the gym was a full-time job. That's why he hired security and made his pass checkers at the doors keep a strict eye on the goings-on. Lex, one of the newer trainers and gym assistants, raised his hand for a high-five when Travis came into the staff room. What's up, boss? Travis had met Lex on streets back when Lex dosed and was a hell of a lot angrier. Travis had been looking for guys to launch into the MMA circuit, and Lex had soared higher than any of them. You guys are right on time. Travis grabbed a bottle of water from the small fridge in the corner and leaned against the center employee table where most lunches and dinners were consumed. Before we start, anything interesting since the last meeting? Twenty new clients signed up today alone, an employee piped up. Two celebrity sightings today, another employee said. Lisa Kudrow and Jude Law. Not bad, Travis said, rifling through a folder on the table. Anything else? People talk constantly about the model on the wall, said one of the second shift pass checkers. I think it's one of the main reasons some women keep coming back. Travis lifted the corner of his mouth. Great. That's client retention. I'd say roughly five girls asked this morning whether you were single, a front desk girl added. That's down from most days. You're slacking, boss, Lex said. Travis cracked a grin, shutting the folder. That's all I need to hear, then. Let's get down to business. But no matter how hard he tried to focus on the people in front of him, all he could see was the delectable curve of Amara's ass behind his eyelids. That sexy body had been burnt into his memory. Which was the last thing he could ever admit to his best friend Eddie. Chapter 2 
Eddie nudged Amara while the car crept through the late afternoon traffic. Hey, you okay or what? Amara turned to look at him, but didn't even see him. Her gaze wandered to the window and out beyond the lanes of traffic. Yeah, I'm fine. She'd been practically brain dead since running into Travis Holt at the gym. Talk about an unexpected welcome home present. Not only did the guy have his own gym, but he was hot enough to melt steel. Money, success, and good looks. He was certainly different than the young Holt she'd known when she'd moved east eight years ago. You seem distracted. Did I piss you off that bad? She clucked her tongue. No, Eddie. I told you. I'm fine. It's just that now that you're home, I worry. He shrugged, staring blankly at the car in front of them. Some of those guys can be real creeps. She sighed, resting her head against two fingertips. Their exit sat a half mile away, but it felt like they'd never get there. And she needed quiet time. A chance to decompress from the hectic hospital rounds she'd made with Mama for her initial chemo appointment that morning. Not only that, but she had to prepare for her upcoming interview. Then on top of her anxiety cake, like the ripest most stressful cherry ever picked, she needed to figure out what these feelings about Eddie's best friend were. Eddie's parental henpecking didn't help matters. Moving home was hard enough, being ensnared in his overprotectiveness annoyed her in a new way now that she was in her mid-twenties. Out in D.C., the three time zones of separation made it easier to handle. But in L.A., it might as well be high school all over again. Except worse because now she had her own life and her own needs, which on occasion included flings with sexy guys who'd never call her back. In all the hustle and bustle of packing up her room in the shared townhouse back east and saying goodbye to her job and friends, she hadn't gotten laid in too long. And she needed it, in a bad way. Travis seemed to fit the bill perfectly. Got status hot and already within reach. Would he be into a fling? Probably, he was a man after all. Just a little dip and then done. Besides, Travis looked like the type of dude who never called anyone but Hollywood celebrities back. What am I supposed to do if I ever want to date anybody? She turned on the blinker, easing into the exit lane. Dating was the farthest thing from her mind, she wanted a hot body and sexy moans. Those guys weren't even leering at me. They were Hajita. She rolled her eyes. Eddie was only three years older than her but he'd made it his job to be the father of the house since their dad skipped out on them when she was ten years old. Besides, you can date. Eddie softened. But bring them home so Ma and I can meet them. Good thing you didn't meet my last boyfriend. The tension in the car spiked. Who? You didn't tell me about any boyfriend out there. He didn't need to know she and that boyfriend had only hooked up for a couple months until he started talking about more. He was my last boyfriend, and he was perfectly fine. I can choose men without your intervention, you know. Eddie shook his head, glaring out the window. Whatever. She eased onto the exit ramp, finally. Traffic moved a bit more smoothly, and soon she pulled into the squad brown apartment complex they'd lived in since the 90s. It was one of the few areas that didn't suffer from frequent and absurd rent hikes. Her only hope was that within a few more years she and Eddie could buy their family the condo they'd deserved all along, in a nicer area, with a big balcony, so their mom could drink tea outside in the afternoons while she read her gossip magazines. Amara parked the SUV, and they walked to the dingy front doors in silence, nearly tripping over the cracked cement steps. Shouting from a nearby apartment reached them, but she couldn't tell which neighbor. It was a stark contrast from her cool and calculated neighborhood in D.C., where almost everyone was a young professional willing to pay over a thousand a month for a tiny closet in a shared apartment just to be closer to the political whispers. But now, being back, she recalled why she and Eddie had never brought friends home when they were in school. Why especially, she couldn't recall many encounters with Travis throughout their adolescence, even though he and Eddie had been best friends since age 14. Only stolen glimpses in the halls of their high school for the one year they both shared it. She blinked hard, struggling to fit the key in the front door. 
When she did, it unlocked with a groan. Amara. Eduardo. Their mother craned her neck over the top of the recliner, her head wrapped in a bright pink bandana. She hadn't lost her hair yet, just wanted to start getting the hang of the style. Oh thank god it's you. I love you mama. I have to get ready for the interview. She kissed her mother's forehead as she walked by, heading for her small bedroom at the back. Eddie dropped his gym bag near the front door and plopped on the couch as she rounded the corner. Bring some leche home with you, Mama called as Amara shut the bedroom door. Silence settled in her childhood bedroom, the bed and walls exactly the same as the day she flew east at age 18. Now, eight years later, returning to this space felt foreign but comforting, like slipping on a favorite sweater in the middle of a new country. LA was a new place to her despite being home. On her own in DC, she'd been working at a justice center that provided legal aid to immigrant women facing domestic abuse issues. Stressful but rewarding, it was a post she hoped to return to, but only if her mama's health improved enough to allow it. Amara never hesitated about moving home once her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. There was no other option. The woman had raised her and Eddie alone after their father stepped out on them to move in with a secret family he'd kept for years on the East Coast. The deception had been crippling, affecting them in ways they didn't even know how to talk about. But planning for her life after the illness felt somehow deceitful. Like if Mama didn't have the luxury of imagining a future, then Amara shouldn't either. Tears pricked her eyes. It had been an emotional couple of days since flying home. Even more emotional than normal. Ever since the diagnosis, it felt like something heavy and bulky coated her. Like a weighted blanket, but she couldn't see the edges to tear it off. Visiting LA for holidays was way different than living here again. Being in the emotional embrace of her mama and brother was comforting at the same time, it was suffocating. Sometimes it was easier to flit about in a big city, content in the knowledge that your history lay 2,000 miles away. She missed the neat lines of DC, the way everyone seemed to have purpose, the productive conversations about toxic masculinity and progressive feminism. When her mother's illness was a distant concept, something to be theorized. Back home the truth crashed into her, fist against front teeth. Between doctor's visits, the traffic, and the job hunt, she needed an outlet. Travis flashed through her mind as she readied her interview outfit. He's the outlet I want. A grin crossed her face as she shimmied out of her leggings and tank top. He seemed to like what he saw, or maybe she was being hopeful. The man was a literal playgirl model, surrounded by throngs of busty models and LA celebrities all day long. He might be Eddie's best childhood friend but he was in a different league now. Just like her. Because DC activists didn't mix with LA bodybuilders. Not that she was looking for anyone anyway, but if she were. Well Travis wasn't her type, not anywhere near it. The guy had to be vain as hell if he had his own pictures supersized and hung like dedications in a temple. Besides, he made his fortune beating other people to a pulp. For fun. It was the antithesis of what she stood for. But that body of his warranted a fling. Shivers ran up and down her spine. As she buttoned her crisp white shirt, she imagined Travis's fingers doing it. There were a lot of things that were different about him, that body, infinitely more sculpted than the last time she'd seen him. His eyes were like molten chocolate, deep and swimming and difficult to sustain eye contact with for too long. He made her knees go weak, and that was saying something after so many years working alongside well-groomed capital hotties. Travis was different. He looked reserved but fierce, full of fire, the type of blaze he tried to keep under wraps. But maybe she was just starved for sex, fawning over the first truly sexy man she'd seen back home. Once she'd smoothed her pencil skirt and clipped her hair back into a smart bun, she touched up her makeup and air smooched herself in the mirror. Though it might not be a justice center working with immigrant women, the job on deck today was based in downtown LA and provided safety, shelter, outreach, and more to victims of abuse. She was strong, confident, capable, and about to get hired on the spot. She repeated it to herself a few times. 
After living on the East Coast and cobbling together her success out there, L.A. shouldn't scare her. After all, this was home. This was where she'd grown up. So why did coming back here scare the shit out of her? Chapter 3 Halt, your one o'clock is here. Travis looked up from the computer screen, smiling tightly at the administrative assistant. Thanks. Be there in a second. It could only be Eddie. Seeing his friend was always the high point of his afternoon, but today he couldn't help but think of Amara too. She'd plagued his thoughts the rest of the day after she'd stopped in. Even came home with him in his mind and accompanied him in the shower, where he'd fisted himself into a groaning orgasm that had tensed his body into rock-solid pleasure from head to toe. He hoped she wouldn't be staying long or would at least stay away. Mixing Amara into his world would be bad news. Holt shoved away from the computer, trying to shake off the sting of screen staring. He left his spacious quiet office, heading through the hallway toward the staff area. When he crossed the doorway facing reception, Eddie was propped against the counter, chatting up the receptionist on duty. And behind him stood Amara, checking out the class list brochure, her full lips snagging his attention before he had a chance to process almost anything else. His belly flopped. Fuck. Hopefully she'd come for Pilates and make a quick exit stage left. Though what he'd really like was for her to show up at his house, unannounced, sweaty and glistening, and ready to pounce on him after a run. His cock stirred. Fuck suck fuck. Eddie's eyes lit up when he spotted Travis. Bro, there you are. They did a half handshake, half hug combo, bumping chests lovingly. Brought the little sis along today, says she needs to distress. Amara's mouth turned up at the comment. Like you don't? Eddie rolled his eyes. You got any classes to recommend for her? Travis steeled himself to take her in, let his eyes sweep up and down her tightly packed frame, loving the arc of her hamstrings as he pretended to think. What are you into? Yoga. Pilates. Cycling. We've got it all. She scrunched up her nose, looking at the list. What's bar? It's like ballerina stuff, Travis said. You use the bar. Plie all that good stuff. Have you ever done it? She snapped her gaze up to meet his. Heat scorched through him. Yeah, I have. Eddie cackled, punching him in the shoulder. I bet you have. Travis grinned. The ribbing was par for the course. He couldn't say a damn thing without inciting teasing from Eddie or the rest of their friends. It's kinda hard. It whips your ass into shape, that's for sure. Her gaze rooted him to his spot. Is my ass out of shape? The question hung heavily in the air. Had that been meant for him or Eddie? His answer quivered on the tip of his tongue, hell no your ass is perfectly, lusciously fine. You said you wanted something new. Eddie shrugged. Try it if you want. She nodded, shoving the paper across the counter toward the receptionist. Okay, I'll do the bar class. She's on the house, Travis told the receptionist. Amara smiled shyly at him, which made his stomach plummet. This was already such bad news. He clapped Eddie on the back, and they headed toward the weight room. How you feeling today? I'm all right. A little sore from yesterday's workout but not much. You're bulking up. They breezed into the weight room, heading for the benches. Today's workout we're gonna do in reverse. Same as yesterday but backwards. Eddie grinned, stretching out. All right, boss. While Eddie readied himself on the bench, Travis scanned the room. A group of girls giggled in the corner, looking blatantly at him and Eddie, and a couple of regular afternoon dudes milled among machines. It was quiet overall, for once the televisions were louder than the grunts and clanking. Looks like you have a fan base, Eddie said as he lay back on the bench. I think we have a fan base. Travis smirked, loading up the bar for his friend. I'll be your wingman if you ask one of them out tonight. Eddie's eyes lit up as he waited. Come on. 
let's go out for some drinks in Los Feliz. We haven't gone out in so long. Travis looked over at the girls again. I don't think I can tonight. Come on, Trav. Eddie slapped his thigh. I'm finally ready to hit the scene again. You gotta respect that. It's your brotherly duty. Travis grinned, loading the last 50-pound weight plate onto the bar. Gotta make me feel guilty about it. Eddie cackled. Come on, N -N, I know what a freak you are. Don't act like you aren't Travis Hansey Holt. The nickname had been coined somewhere around their junior year, Hansey, because he'd discovered how many girls he could get by getting into fights, and also how far he could get with girls by being a little extra daring. A horrible nickname, so of course it had stuck. It's Wednesday. It was his last attempt at an excuse. So. For me, it's the weekend. Eddie slapped his leg again. What do you say? I wish I could take out your sister instead. He sighed loudly. Fine. But I have to be home by midnight for real. I've got early meetings tomorrow. Eddie's smile widened. We can get into all the trouble we want before 11.30, you know how we roll. Except a Wednesday night out on the town at age 29 felt a lot different from when they were hitting the strip at age 21, or even age 25. Travis hated using the term slowing down, but sometimes he wondered if that was happening. He was aging sure, but did that mean he'd lost his edge as a connoisseur of ladies? He certainly had no trouble being attracted to women, but the zest for follow-through had shriveled. If he had to predict, the night would start off with beer, segue into a couple of shots, and he'd leave with at least two numbers of women who had gathered like moths around the light. The attention was nice but after a while, like almost a full decade of it, it became grating. Sometimes he just wanted a damn coherent conversation. With a grunt, Eddie started his reps. Travis watched and counted, not letting his gaze or mind wander while his friend breathed through the workout. After ten they settled the bar, and Eddie took a deep breath, letting his arms fall. That shit's heavy. Travis laughed. No shit. Go ask those girls out. Jesus, already? Let's get ten more in. Fine. Eddie grabbed the bar and leapt in sooner than what he might normally do. After the requisite grunting and gasping, he lodged the bar. Now go. Travis glanced toward the girls, they were still eyeing him and Eddie. You're the big shot here. I told you, I gotta be the wingman. Travis shook his head, slapping Eddie's leg with a face towel. You know I don't prowl on the clientele. Eddie grumbled, hopping to his feet. Fine, fine. But I'm name-dropping you, and you can't do anything about it. Amara milled around the reception area, checking every ten seconds to see if Travis might wander by. How did anyone get work done around him? One of the employee doors moved and she tensed. A trainer came out, she deflated. Travis was too hot, hot enough to make her start a gym routine even. But it was worth it to glimpse that body in the flesh. Lara? Eddie's voice cut through to her above the murmur of the foyer. She spun on her heels. Her brother came toward her, draping his towel around his neck. You been waiting long? No. She flashed a smile, scanning the area behind him discreetly. My class ended about ten minutes ago. Did you like it? Hard as hell as promised. Typical Holt. He adjusted his duffel bag over his shoulder. You ready? Where's Travis? In the gym. Eddie narrowed his eyes. Why? Was there something wrong with the class? I just want to thank him for letting me take it for free. And get another look at him before we go, for my fantasies later. You can tell him later. He nudged her toward the door. Let's get out of here. Tell him later when. She frowned unsure how to extend their gym visit any longer without looking like an addict. They pushed through the front door into the overhead sun, she squinted in the sudden shift, feeling dizzy. Like later tonight. 
Listen, you're still going downtown tonight, right? She'd mentioned yesterday that she had an engagement with some friends of hers. Eddie didn't know she'd lined up a Tinder date, one of the few she'd swiped right on since coming home. It was part preemptive dating strategy, part hookup attempt, part friend making. Yeah. Think you could take me and Holt on your way. He flashed a cheesy grin, holding it steady, as she went around to the driver's side of the car. She saw it through the car even, serious pandering. They slid into the SUV, the leather seats singed the backs of her thighs as she settled in. She turned the car on, blasting the AC. One of the last hot days of the season. Why? I told you it would probably be an early night. Which is fine because Holt has to be home by midnight. Which means I would have to be back to wherever you are by 11.30 at the latest. She shook her head. Where are you going? To the Dinky Bar, you know it's my favorite. Besides, it'll be on the way if you're heading downtown. Holt's place too. He couldn't know how easily he'd sealed the deal with that comment. Just like he couldn't know the real nature of her business downtown that night. She hesitated anyway. It'll save us cab fare, Eddie said, wiping at his neck with the towel. Come on, Mara. Help your single brother out. I'm feeling good about life again. She sighed dramatically. Well, sure, I guess. Eddie grinned, fiddling with the stereo system. Thanks, Hermana. I owe you. Reggaeton music swelled and filled the car. Amara tapped her fingers against the steering wheel as she drove, unable to think about anything other than what Travis might look like later that night. What did he look like outside of gym shorts and a t-shirt? What was in his closet? What was his house even like, an extended version of his gym? Excitement burbled in her belly. It might only be a car ride there and back, but she'd take it. Being around Travis was a jolt of electricity, addictive, a little painful, and totally jaw-dropping. Later that evening, Imara prepared a cup of honey lemon tea in the kitchen, while Eddie picked up a phone call in the dining room just beyond the door. Halt. For how little she ever saw Travis during her own high school years, Eddie more than made up for it in how much she overheard the friends talking on the phone. She perked up as she sensed him begin to pace the dining room, and squirted a drizzle of honey into the mug. What do you mean? It's free, who cares? Another pause. Amara reached for the lemon she'd cut up, and squeezed as much juice as she could into the hot water. She's going downtown anyway. She doesn't care, I swear. She tensed. They were clearly talking about the arrangement for her to drive them downtown. Her heart rate picked up. Would Travis back out? Please God let this man get into our car tonight. Halt it's fine. I swear to you. We'll be there at nine. It's cool. Amara sucked at her bottom lip when the lemon juice ran into a tiny cut on her middle finger. She shook it off, drawing a low breath. It always surprised her how much a drop of lemon juice could sting. Why? You have to be home by midnight so it's perfect. Bro I'm not splitting the cab so don't even pretend. Amaro relaxed. Eddie would convince him of the plan, he had to. Maybe she could sneak a glimpse of his house even. That would be the real prize. With each passing hour, Travis became more of a celebrity in her mind. He was a living god. Tight. See you later. Eddie came into the kitchen. Amara swirled a spoon in the mug and asked, what was that about? Halt acting weird about you driving. He shook his head. Guy tries to act like he's gonna drop a hundred dollars on a cab tonight. No way. He needs to save that money for the bar. She snorted. Does he have something against me driving? I do have a driver's license. I know. He knows. Didn't want to put you out, I guess. Not like you cared. She narrowed her eyes playfully at him. You're my sister. It's your job. Eddie pinched her and left the kitchen. 
Amara watched him head for the living room where their mother napped in the recliner. It might not be her job to shuttle him around places, but it sure was her job to make sure this household remained as happy as it could be, given the recent circumstances. Eddie had moved back into the apartment once his last girlfriend dumped him six months ago. The timing was right too, he'd arrived just before their mother started showing signs. Of course they didn't know it at the time, but she'd begun metastasizing breast cancer, somewhere deep inside her tissues. A silent stalking predator, feeding on their mother. The apartment seemed small now, maybe it was the passage of time. Their lives had all grown bigger since the high school days. Or maybe Mama's illness was the newest resident, taking up whatever space the three of them hadn't occupied. Amara went to the living room. Mama stirred in the recliner. Eddie changed the channel from an infomercial to the weather. Ma, you ready for your tea? She set it on the folding table next to the recliner. It's hot still. Cuidado. Mama yawned and stretched out, her little hands making tight fists as she spread her arms into the air. A hey, what a good nap. Feeling better than earlier? Amara settled onto the couch across from Mama, next to Eddie. Like a million bucks. Her mother's accent clashed comically with the American idiom. Thanks for the tea, am I a more? Eddie swiped through his phone, ankle hooked over his knee. Amara nudged him, curious for a glimpse of his screen. What are ya doing? Is that Tinder? It was the only way to meet anyone decent in the city. Shush. He finished something and then pocketed the phone. I just don't understand the Tinder. Mama blew on the tea, cradling the mug in both hands. All the swiping, the liking, the thising, the thating. At the end of the day, nobody even knows how to talk on the telephone anymore, no matter how much they use one. Amara snorted. Good point, Ma. Where do you hear about Tinder anyway? Eddie frowned. I keep up, Eddie. I know about hip stuff. You have to keep up these days, Amara remarked, snickering. Or else you won't understand a damn thing going on in the world. Her mom sent a firm look, must have been the use of the word damn. Why can't you kids go find dates the old-fashioned way? Mama took a tentative sip. What's the old-fashioned way? Waiting until your parents make an arranged marriage. Amara smirked. No. You go out to community events. You meet the neighbors. You marry the sons of friends, and so on. That's just what it was like where you grew up, Ma. Eddie cocked a brow. We're in LA now. It's a different beast. Besides, Eddie doesn't have any friends I'm allowed to date. Amara crossed her arms over her chest, feigning an annoyed look at Eddie. If only I were allowed to have a potential dating pool. Eddie crossed his arms through the air. Not on my watch. My friends are pigs. Amara laughed. How can you say that? They're your friends. All men are pigs when it comes to my little sister. He shook his head, pocketing his phone. Besides, I've known some of those guys since we were 13. Which means I know too much. You're better off finding some dude without a shared history. That way I won't know what a sick guy he really is. Even Travis is that sick. She tried to play it cool, praying he wouldn't catch the curiosity in her voice. He's the worst of them all. She rolled her eyes. Her mother sipped again at her tea. Eddie, you're too hard on her. Your friends are lovely men. He shook his head again, scoffing. They're my best friends but they're not good enough for her. His overprotectiveness was just this side of this like. Sometimes it made her feel warm and fuzzy, as if he really knew what he was doing. But most of the time, like today, it made her feel as if he was just stuck on a train that had one destination, her eternal celibacy. And the fact that it hadn't let up by age 26 seemed like a new type of oppression. One that she had to buck. Immediately. Nobody is good enough for me. She stared at him as he fiddled with his sneakers. 
It's not like I'm trying to date your friends but seriously, you wouldn't even want one of your best friends to be with me? I can't believe you'd trust a stranger over a friend. Strangers are the ones who turn out to be serial killers. At least you know the extent of your friend's afflictions. That's just the thing. They're fucked up. Their mother glared at Eddie this time. Sorry ma. Eddie turned to look at Amara. But what if they hurt you? I'd have to kill a friend, which I'd do. Amara rolled her eyes. But whatever. It doesn't matter. You're not dating them, you're not dating anyone. Why are we even talking about it? Carita Amara. Her mother sighed. Someday you will find the man of your dreams. And may God let Eddie approve of him. Amara let her head drop back onto the couch, suddenly exhausted. The man of her dreams. She doubted that. Sounded like a fairy tale that just didn't exist. She'd seen it firsthand. Even the father of her dreams could still just walk away one day, without a word, without even a goodbye. Sure, hashtag not all men or whatever. But probably hashtag most men. She didn't want anyone not long term. But she wanted the playing field to be level, at least. She wanted the option to date whoever she wanted, even if she chose not to. But Eddie would likely never let up. So the only way forward was to do whatever the fuck she wanted. She'd just have to keep it quiet as long as she could. And the first step involved getting way closer to Travis. Chapter 4 Travis jumped when the buzzer sounded. He'd been pacing the foyer like a predator, waiting for a sign that Eddie and Amara had made it past the doorman. Hurrying to the door, he pushed the talk button. Hello. Holt. We're here. Ready when you are. Travis paused, thumb hovering over the button to respond. Should they come up? Having Amara around changed things. He didn't know what the fuck to do anymore. If it were only Eddie, he'd invite him up. Wanna pregame? Nah, she's gotta get downtown. Travis shoved his wallet into the back pocket of his relaxed jeans and flipped off the lights before letting himself out quietly. What was he so worked up about? It was like he was about to give a presentation at school and he'd forgotten all his note cards containing the prepared speech. Except it wasn't school, and it wasn't a speech, just his best friend and his best friend's sister, which made him feel considerably lamer than he had in perhaps a decade. Amara pushed him off kilter. He crossed his arms, studying the crease of the elevator doors as it descended from the 20th floor. He'd moved into this place the year before, and it was the definition of swank. He couldn't even feel the elevator transition from stationary to moving, whereas in the last place he'd lived, it felt as if a bulldozer head-butted the back of it when it moved into motion. Success afforded him this, as well as a shit ton of additional work, lots of sleepless nights, and a waning appetite for dating. Which was precisely why he'd postponed dating indefinitely. He didn't have time to be disappointed. Travis straightened his back as he sauntered out of the elevator. Approaching the front door, he flipped his black hoodie over his head, allowing it to fall over his eyebrows and obscure his forehead. The doorman nodded at Travis as he walked through the glass doors and toward the black SUV waiting for him in the cul-de-sac. As he neared, the passenger side window slid down. Eddie flashed him a sideways peace sign. Travis cracked a grin and hopped into the back seat. He pulled the door shut behind him. Amara's fresh sultry perfume reached him immediately, clouding his mind. What's up? Eddie peered behind the seat. Halt. He offered his fist, Travis knocked his knuckles against his friends. Good evening. Amara's sweetly husky voice thrilled through him. His stomach nodded. Bad sign bad sign. Eddie tells me you moved here last year. Looks pretty nice. It's an upgrade. Travis looked out the window, ignoring the urge to stare at Amara. He'd gotten a quick glimpse of her as he'd entered, not enough to even say if she wore earrings or not, but combined with the scent he was damn near losing it. 
images of her ass danced through his head as he watched the streaks of light passing by them. I wanted to see it, but Eddie said we didn't have time. You have to be downtown to meet your girlfriends, I thought, Eddie said. You're right. She sighed. Is there really a rooftop hot tub there? He steeled himself as he tuned back into the conversation. He glanced at Amara in the rearview mirror, then out the front window. There is. Can I check it out sometime? Eddie shrugged, staring out the window. It's up to halt. Travis's blood froze. He forced a small laugh. Come anytime. Polite enough but not solid. If Amara showed up at his house in a bikini, he'd lose it. Even in front of Eddie. Next week maybe? She flicked her gaze to meet his in the rearview mirror. Desire shuddered through him. When he didn't respond right away she added, Come on I won't bother your guy time. I swear. Oh he'd love that. As long as Eddie could get distracted for a little while with something else. Maybe if he brought one of the girls from tonight with him. Sure. Whatever works for you guys. Eddie turned up the volume, bringing to life some rap music that had been playing low. Travis settled back into his seat, head turned toward the window but eyes steady on the rearview mirror, searching out a glimpse of Amara's eyes. He spent the rest of the car ride struggling to not think about her. By the time she pulled up to their favorite bar, he felt exhausted from the mental jumping jacks. Thanks Hermana. Eddie kissed her cheek before sliding out the front seat. Travis nodded toward her and hopped out. They both watched as she maneuvered the SUV back into traffic. Eddie slapped Travis on the back and steered them toward the entrance. I know it's short but sweet tonight but damn it I needed this. Travis smiled, his mind still in the car with Amara as she drove off. Inside the bar, their dates were already smiling and waving at them from across the room. Travis lowered his hood, plastering on a fake smile, a camera-ready face, whatever would help him get through the night with these girls he didn't want to entertain. Two hours later, Travis buzzed hard. The girls from the gym had come in a pack, which meant Eddie got to corner the one he'd had his eye on, and the remaining three hung around Travis like a swarm of bees after nectar. Occasionally he'd get a moment to himself, but sooner or later one would swing back toward him, purring like a lynx, ready to pounce with more questions and wide eyes. Travis took another pull of his beer, staring at the chalk-scrawled menu behind the bar. He'd probably had enough beer for tonight, especially if he hoped to be bright-eyed the next morning. Still, there was time for another beer if Amara showed up when she said she would. It might make the night go quicker. The girls were pretty, but there were only so many ways to feign interest in their careers or workout plans before he became totally depleted. He downed his beer and tapped the glass bottom against the wooden bar. Another beer appeared, along with a nod from the bartender. The girls were hovering again. In the far corner, Eddie sat buried in conversation with the blonde from that afternoon. They looked like they were really hitting it off. Eddie wasn't good with small talk with strangers, so this far in, it had to be genuine. The wooden bar curved in a U-shape around to the other side of the building. The wall of liquors and kegs obscured the view from one side to the other, save a few slats where he could see the front door swing open occasionally with a new arrival. None of their bar buddies were here tonight so he couldn't go bug somebody else. It was these girls or the beer. Travis. The brunette purred into his ear again. He glanced over at her. She sipped a new bright mixed drink, her breath sweet with liquor. I wanted you to tell me again about how much you can bench press. Her other friends were at a different table, maybe she was using the distance to launch a full seduction attack. He contemplated his beer for a moment. Hitting on this girl was out of the question. He didn't have the energy left to do it, not even with the final beer. He swept his gaze across the bar, mulling over a response, when the front door swinging open caught his eye again. A silken-haired beauty swept in, those umber eyes like a magnet even from across the bar. She looked around once, and then Travis's belly sank. Amara. Again. He sipped at his beer and stood up. 
I gotta go to the bathroom. He offered a tight smile to the brunette and wandered around to the other side of the bar. Amara sat down on a stool as he approached. You're early. She turned and looked up at him, eyebrow cocked. And you're fast. I thought if I got here early enough, I could steal a quick drink without you noticing. He sighed, easing onto the stool next to her. The scent of her perfume reached him again, making his thighs tense. Fuck he'd do so many things to her if she'd let him. As long as Eddie never found out. The thought sobered him. How was your night? She shrugged. All right. Did you have a fun time with, he searched his brain for some recollection of what Eddie had told him earlier, your library group or whatever. She snorted. Library group. Did Eddie tell you that? Maybe. But I could have made it up too. I went on a date. She pushed a $10 bill across the bar top when the bartender returned with her drink. Someone I met on Tinder. His eyebrows shot up, involuntarily looking toward the other side of the bar, as though to make sure Eddie hadn't overheard. He was knee-deep in that girl still. Tinder, huh? This will be good. She laughed, sipping at her beer, eyes sparkling as she looked at him. It wasn't that good. It was just regular. The sex or... She pursed her lips. Come on. You think Tinder guys are so good, I'll give it up that fast? Hell no. Travis scooted his stool closer to hers, partly because of the clamor of the bar and partly because he wanted to be as close to her as possible without mounting her. I don't know much about that stuff. I belong to a different social network now. What's that? Entrepreneurism. He flashed a grin, taking a pull of his beer. It's the steadiest girlfriend I've ever had. Amara laughed, gaze lingering on his face. You don't look like the steady girlfriend type. My business and I have been going at it for three years now. That might as well be forever. Congratulations. Her gaze wandered down the bar as she thought about something. Do you want to go sit outside with me? Travis looked around the bar. The racket had grown to a dull roar throughout the night. He nodded. He'd follow her wherever she wanted to go, really. She headed through a door labeled, Patio. A smallish square of cement greeted them, with one plastic chair next to an overflowing cigarette butt container. Amara grinned at him and sat down on a parking block, looking out toward the cars filling the back lot. Travis joined her. The relative quiet of the night thrummed inside him. They stared out at the cars and up at the sky for a few moments until Amara spoke up. You look so different from how I remember you. It's been a while, huh? He sipped at his beer. Honking sounded in the distance. You look pretty different yourself. You never used to dress like this. Certainly never went out on a weeknight. And now you're hot enough to make me consider betraying my best friend. I grew up finally. You did too. She nudged him. You were always so scrawny back then. Yeah, I was pretty scrawny. His heart tightened in his chest at the memories. He tried not to think of his high school self too much. There was so much pain there, so much anxiety and failure. He never understood people who looked back on high school days like they were the best ever. He was happy to leave them in the dust as soon as he could. How did you get so beefy? She looked over at him, eyes glinting from the nearby streetlight. He tilted his head from side to side. It had been a combination of so many things. Mostly from all the fighting. Why did you fight so much? I remember my freshman year, Eddie used to tell me about you getting the shit kicked out of you all the time. I never understood. If you had my dad, you would have fought too. He laughed a little, trying to make it sound lighter than it was. Like his father hadn't been the sole reason he'd become a half-cocked hellion, getting into scraps every chance he could. Amara traced her finger over a crack in the asphalt. Was he bad? Eddie never told me anything about him. 
Travis contemplated the ground, watching her bronze finger trace the random whirls of the crack. Yeah, he was pretty bad. Fighting was like the only way he'd pay attention to me. She paused in her tracing, looking up at him, eyes full of sadness. How the fuck had they gotten so deep already? He never talked about this shit with anyone, not even Eddie, even though his buddy had lived through some of it alongside him. Something about her made it feel okay though. Like his pain was safe with her. Did it ever work out? I mean, did he ever finally notice? Travis squeezed his beer bottle. Never quite the way I wanted. Did you know I'm a five-time middleweight champion? Never even got a congrats from him. Amara rested her head against her knees, watching him. She brought her hand up to his shoulder and left it there for a few moments. He offered her a small smile. Though the very fact that they were having this conversation was abnormal, it felt absolutely right at the same time. Do you still talk to him? Not much. Amara's gaze drifted back to the asphalt. So how did you get into the big leagues? I got really good with all that fighting I did. Started winning money, and then finally some people noticed me. I joined a training camp, but they had some bad practices. Got mixed up with steroids and all that. From there it ballooned. Until one day the most famous league in the world was knocking on my door. Shit. I don't know what to probe first. She laughed a little. I thought you couldn't use steroids in professional sports. You can't. I had to detox. That shit was rough. But better for you, she said. MMA saved my life in that respect. Travis sniffed, digging his heel into the asphalt. After a moment of pleasant silence, Travis nudged her. What about you? Anything emotionally scarring from your past you'd like to share? Their eyes met, and something warm shivered through him. He liked this, a lot. He hadn't talked to anyone like this in so long, in hell if he'd ever felt so comfortable so quickly around a hottie like Amara. You know that our dad left when I was ten. Travis nodded. Growing up, Travis wished he and Eddie could have found some other new dad to replace their shitty ones. One that would have called them on the phone and been excited about their grades. That never happened, no matter how many nights he prayed for it as he fell asleep. When I lived in D.C., I reached out to him. She fiddled with her shoelaces as she talked. I tracked him down, found where he was living, and I called him. Whoa. Travis took a swig of his beer. What did he say? He acted like I had the wrong number at first, and then he quietly told me a time and place that we could meet up. You went? She nodded. I went. I wish I could say I stood him up. Because that's what he did to me. Didn't even show up there. She sighed. I don't know what I expected. He walked out on us, after all. I thought maybe he would have been excited to hear from me. She paused, swallowing. I haven't told Eddie or my mom still. I'm embarrassed. I won't rat on you. She sipped at her drink. Thanks. She paused. You okay about it? She ran her tongue over her top teeth. Yeah. I mean I dealt with that stuff a long time ago. She sent him a smile, but he didn't totally believe it. It doesn't bother me. But I feel like if Eddie finds out, it'll crush him more. Make him even angrier than he's already been his entire life about it. Can't blame him. Most important man in his life walked out on him. Travis swallowed a knot in his throat. He sometimes wished his own dad had had the balls to just walk out on him. Like that might have been better than the violence or the pure lack of interest. Yeah, but anger can't be an excuse for blindness. He furrowed a brow. What do you mean? Since coming home I've been noticing some things. She shook her head, sighing. His overprotectiveness, his rigidity, his anxiety, all that. He's always been this way. But I think it's gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better at least. But he refuses to see it. 
Travis took a long draw from his beer, her words making uncomfortable swirls in his belly. She was sharp, and she was right. So what should he do? He's got to stop letting those wounds rule his life. A moment of silence passed, and then her phone buzzed. She fished it out of her pocket. A text from Eddie read, You gonna be here soon? I think this is our 10-minute warning, Amara said, tapping out a response to her brother. I'm not making you late, am I? Not at all. Travis could stay here all night, perched on the parking stop in the night air by her side. It's nice to talk to you. Coming back here, I feel like I don't know a soul anymore. She smiled at him, some strands of her silky brown hair crossing over her forehead. And even though we never hung out during school, you're still my people. All your high school friends move away? Yeah, or they're, I don't know, in a different phase of life. She laughed, but it sounded sad. LA can feel so lonely sometimes. Her words resonated inside him, a strange truth he'd never realized, like putting together the last piece of the puzzle that finally illuminated the picture. You're right. There's so many fucking people everywhere, but most couldn't give a shit. And even those who could give a shit feel lonely too. She shook her head. We live in strange patterns. Isolating ourselves in our homes, our cars, pulling away, but desperate for human contact. An exercise, he added. But I can't tell you how many beautiful people I meet who are fucking miserable. She grinned up at him, eyes sparkling. Are you happy? The question hit him like a surprise uppercut. So simple but so hard. I am. You hesitated. There are things I still want. But I'm getting there. I feel good. I'm happy. He paused. He felt like there was something missing in his business, but couldn't put his finger on it. What about you? I'm happy, yeah. She nodded. But same as you. Things I'm still figuring out. I'll get there. He downed the last of his beer, heart aching strangely. Their conversation begged to be continued, he could sit out here for hours with her and still want more. That was a first in his world. A scary first. He'd been with plenty of girls in his life, but she felt like the first real woman. Eddie said you were looking for a job. Yeah, I had an interview the other day. Got a couple more lined up. What are you looking at? She shrugged. Whatever can pay my bills and bring peace to the world. I work in nonprofits. I applied for some admin positions at a couple of places, a domestic violence shelter, a rehab clinic. We'll see who wants me. Wow. She wasn't just gorgeous on the outside, it went all the way through. You're doing important work. Her heartfelt grin was so pure, he wanted to kiss it, bring her face to his and feel those juicy lips against his own even for the briefest of seconds. Travis stood and offered a hand to Amara. She took it and popped up to her feet easily, giggling. He wrapped an arm around her waist and brought her in close, a reflex, one that operated more fluidly with the influence of alcohol. She inhaled sharply, her dark eyes sweeping up to meet his. Something passed between them a shiver in time that sparked question marks and exclamation points. He told himself to let go of her, but he cinched her closer, her body soft and curvaceous in his grip. Em? Um? He tried to laugh a little, but it sounded forced. You're hard to let go of. The corner of her mouth turned up. That's what they tell me. Why didn't you come home sooner? Her gaze darkened as he slid his hands to the dip in her waist. I've never planned on living in LA again. I'll be back out east as soon as I can. Her words jarred something loose and he found the clarity to step away. But not before squeezing a hip. He headed for the door, reluctant to leave this cocoon of intimacy in the bar's back lot. It left him desperate to recreate it, desperate to find more ways to see her and spend time with her, to talk and open up and just be near her. He pulled the door open, mind spinning when the noise of the bar reached them. Back into the fray. Amara took her seat where she'd been sitting before, 
casting him a shy grin as he walked around the other side to find Eddie. The way she looked at him felt like they were dating, like maybe they'd been dating for years. How could he feel so good around her, so quickly? It was practically a puzzle, made even more complicated by the fact that she was Eddie's sister, the one eternal forbidden fruit. But that didn't mean he had to act on anything. He could just be around her for as long as he could. Until the fascination wore off, or they got tired of each other, or whatever else might happen. It was a horrible idea. Probably the worst idea he'd ever had. But he couldn't stop himself, even though he knew just how poorly this could turn out. Chapter 5 Mar. The annoyance in Eddie's voice felt like a slap. Calm your ass. What? She flung clothes around the dark bedroom. She'd just seen the sports bra a minute ago. If only she had more than five square feet of livable space in this damn apartment, she could keep track of things. Come to the gym with me. You're being ridiculous. I am not being ridiculous. She huffed, sitting on the bed. The morning had been a series of unfortunate failures. Mama's around-the-clock nausea had begun, just as the doctors expected. Car troubles meant she'd missed a 9 a.m. interview. Another nonprofit had emailed her around 11, saying she didn't quite fit to interview further. And now, nearing noon, the crushing implications of Mama's failing health combined with joblessness and rising medical bills were exacerbated by the loss of her sports bra. Blow off some steam. He jerked his head toward the hallway. Try a different class. You know you'll like it. Holt will get you in for free, so don't worry about the money. She sighed, massaging her face in her hands. I can't find my gym clothes. Eddie stepped into the bedroom and flipped the light on. He took a look around, peered under the desk, and then extracted the fuchsia garment from the peg of the desk chair. Here. Now are you ready? She cracked a grin, snatching the bra out of her brother's hands. Thanks. I guess I'm a little stressed out this morning. He scoffed. A little. Girl, you need to take a breath. It's okay if you don't find a job in a week, you know. It takes longer than that. I'm just so mad still about the car. How could it just not turn on the day of my interview? He shrugged. Bad luck. But my guys are finishing it up now. It was the starter. We got it good to go. So come on. She sighed, sifting through a few more items on the bed. It would help too, if she had put any of the clothes from her suitcase into the dresser. Okay. I'll be ready. I meet Holt at one. I'm gonna go get the car from the mechanics next door, and then you better have your sweat face ready. He gave her a pointed look and disappeared down the hallway. An hour later, Amara blinked at the bright, crisp lighting of Holt Body Fitness. Steel beams crisscrossed the two-story tall foyer. The glass wall between the welcome hall and the main weight room sparkled, like it got a rub down at least every half hour. The place seemed cleaner, more interesting, and trendier than she remembered from the last time. Even the foyer seemed like it could be used in a top model ad. Some lithe models strewn along the low, blocky sofas or draped over the angular reception desk. Who had done his decorating? If Travis had a hand in it, she was dying to see his apartment. That tower she picked him up from the other night looked pretty upper crust. Hard to believe Eddie's best friend could live there. In her mind, they were all still bumbling teens, trying to scrape together enough money to buy a dinner out. Occasionally, the fact that she had a 401k still shocked her. Whole tea. Eddie laughed as he approached his buddy. They were the definition of platonic lovers. A grin blossomed on Travis's face and he grabbed Eddie's hand in a shake, bringing his arm around to hug him, which turned into a full-blown bear hug. You missed yesterday, Travis said, punching him in the arm. Eddie winced. I had this promotion scheduled. I told you. Travis grabbed Eddie's shoulders, squeezing them so tightly that Eddie sucked in a breath. Well, it's shoulder day. Get ready. 
Amara could sit here all day and watch the two of them. But who was she kidding? It was Travis she could watch, like some exotic creature on display. He swiveled toward her, nodding. Sup, Amara. Hey, Travis. What are you trying to get into today? Something about his tone told her he'd forgotten entirely about their sensual slip on the back patio last Wednesday. The nearness that had practically burned the hem of her top. Maybe she'd missed her one chance to have a halt fling. She peered toward the hall that led to the various workout classrooms, and then over Travis's shoulder toward the glass-encased weight room. Laughter reached her, a group of guys making their way into the weight room. This shoulder day sounds kind of interesting. His eyebrows went up as his gaze traveled across her chest. He was just assessing her, but the attention was titillating. She wondered if he could see the tight points of her nipples through her tank top. She straightened her spine, stuck out her chest a bit. All right. Let's get you in there. He spun on his heels and led them both to the weight room. Only a couple of days since the dinky bar, and he seemed somehow new and different. Despite the energy and the newness, there was a quiet steadiness to him that she sensed was desperate to get more of. His gym was a bizarre extension of him too. Seemed the building itself was a polished handsome man leading people down the path to wellness, beckoning them to come along. It was hard to come inside and not feel energized. They breezed through the doors, past the attendant on duty. All eyes turned to them. She felt like a pauper in the wake of the king. Travis led them to the far corner, where props and workout paraphernalia were stored. He passed two foam rollers to them, and then took one for himself. We've got to warm up first, he said to her. Eddie must have known exactly what was coming, he knelt on the ground and arranged the foam roller under his back. She watched as Travis lay down on the ground, propping himself up by his shoulders while he rolled the foam underneath his low back. His calves flexed while he worked it up and down slowly. He talked but what was he saying? She nodded distractedly, glancing at his pelvis again as he rolled. Maybe the next step was to mount him? That would probably loosen up her shoulder girdle, or whatever. Okay. He hopped up to his feet. Then Eddie will show you the band stretch. I'll be right back. He hurried off towards someone who had waved at him from across the gym. Travis was a hawk, she hadn't even realized anyone else had entered needing his attention. But how could she? She was too absorbed with watching the back and forth of his penis girdle. Amara joined Eddie on the floor, he was gazing peacefully at the ceiling as he rolled back and forth. This feels pretty nice on my shoulder harness, she murmured after a couple of rolls. Shoulder girdle, Eddie corrected. You know what I mean. Do you always warm up like this? Most days. There are different warm-ups depending on what we're gonna do that day. Of course Travis would be the expert on all that. Being able to drink from his spout, quenched in a way she didn't know she'd needed. After enough rolling, Eddie guided her to a stretchy band hooked to the wall. He helped her pull her chest open and stretch out the shoulders, while Travis looked to be in a business chat with someone by the door. After a bit, Travis high-fived the slick-looking guy who'd come to talk to him, then headed their way. When he got close, he nodded toward Eddie. Pull over press. Eddie grabbed a steel bar hanging on the wall. Travis reached for another smaller bar and jerked his chin toward the ground. Lie down. The simple directive titillated in a way she couldn't quite understand. She hurried to lie down, feet facing Eddie's, and latched onto the steel bar that Travis lowered to her. The edges of his shorts hovered above her. Would she be able to see his penis maybe? Amara, you're acting obsessed with this man's junk. Stop it. You're gonna hold this bar like this, he showed her how before he passed it to her, and then just slowly lower it over your head. Easy does it. We're just warming up so don't get wild with it. Do I look like a wild girl to you? He smiled but it looked strained, watching as she moved the bar up and down. I've learned to not make assumptions about women when it comes to being wild. She couldn't fight the smirk. He'd probably been with enough women to generate his own statistical norms regarding them. 
You've got it. Keep it slow. He knelt beside her to watch as she moved the bar. His gaze followed her biceps like a laser beam. You're gonna feel it here, he said, squeezing her shoulder. Goosebumps emerged across her back. And down here. He pointed toward her abs. You mean my crotch? Yeah, it's getting a real workout. Amara. Eddie's annoyance cut through like a knife. Pay attention. This is legit training you're getting. She snickered, and Travis looked amused. If we're working out your crotch right now, I need to go back to school because I've been doing a lot of shit wrong. It's just all the clenching my pussy is doing with you so close to me. Right? The abs? Yeah, I feel it there. I'll feel it there for a week afterward, fuck. Travis grinned and stole the bar from her after a few more reps. Good. We're not trying to make this your workout though. Remember that. Just warming up, getting you loose. He tossed the bar onto the holster on the wall with considerable ease. The thing felt like a ton when it had been suspended over her head, so she couldn't imagine the sort of weight this guy could lift. Maybe he could lift all of me against a wall. He motioned for them to get up, and Amara stumbled to standing, woozy and bewildered. Travis made her weightless, his deep brown eyes on her body anywhere, could send her into the stratosphere. Maybe this had been a bad idea. Maybe she could just wait for an accidental run-in after bar or Pilates like all the rest of the girls, instead of pursuing him for a one-night stand that might take her way out of her comfort zone. Eddie made his way to a machine on the far side after Travis gave him some directions. Then Travis nodded toward a bench near them where a steel bar sat suspended. Sit down on the edge of the bench. Again his directive was like a pinch on the ass. She put her butt on the bench, looking up at him with wide eyes. He could order her around any time. He sauntered over to a row of dumbbells, his racerback tank top nicely showing off his golden rippling lats. She gulped, thighs clenching around the bench. We're gonna start with these. He showed her two ten-pound dumbbells, biceps rounding nicely as he displayed them. Hang on. She'd worn the sports bra under her tank top, just in case she got too hot during the workout. And though she'd heated up considerably during the warm-up, she thought it time to be a little provocative. She tore the tank top off, allowing her restrained breasts a tiny gulp of fresh air. It's so hot in here. She dropped the tank top to the side of the bench, watching as Travis's gaze traveled across the newly exposed flesh. The fuchsia garment pushed her boobs together nicely, made them look round and full and perky. It was more of a fashion bra than a workout bra, admittedly. Ready? His gaze met hers, but she swore there was something there. Something that might mean his little squeeze at the bar wasn't simply the outcome of beer and a nearby pussy. She took the dumbbells and lifted them slowly, methodically above her head as Travis described. He mimicked the movement in front of her with each rep, cheering her on when her arms got shaky. Watching his fine physique in front of her, encouraged and distracted in equal measure. After a few moments of directed breathing and upward reps, Travis asked, You found any jobs yet? She huffed. Nope. I got turned down for one today and missed my interview for another, because the damn car broke down. Concern crossed his face. Shit. How'd you guys make it here? Eddie hustled and got the starter replaced. He grinned. He's good like that. Keep your elbows in. Five more okay. He hovered his hand outside her elbow as she repeated the reps. The brief contact sizzled through her, but maybe he didn't notice it at all since he kept scanning the room like a lifeguard on duty. This was just another day at the job for him. He barked a directive to Eddie across the room. After a minute Travis looked down at her, face soft and focused. You'll get a job soon. I know it. Well thanks. You've already got it all. He lifted his eyebrows as he looked her up and down. It's in the bag. He motioned for her to follow. She stood on wobbly legs despite not having worked them and trailed after him, unsure if the comment had been meant as gym time platitude or something more. Did she really have it all? 
And did Travis think that? It was hard to imagine Travis seeing her as sexy as she saw him. But maybe. But maybe not. She plopped down on the next machine Travis led her to and got to work pulling weights. It was hard to figure him out. But more than that, maybe she shouldn't even bother. He could be sexy as fuck, but with Eddie in the way, she'd never be able to get to him. Unless she started getting crafty. Chapter 6 Travis high-fived Eddie and Amara after a sweaty, tough workout. He'd pushed them both hard, mostly because Eddie had skipped a day, and Travis didn't want Amara to think he'd go easy on her. As a gym owner, he had a reputation to live up to, which he'd reminded Amara of once during the workout. To which she'd responded, what your biceps? The training session had been equal parts difficult and easygoing. He'd spent way too much attention on her. As a novice, she needed the attention, but since she was gorgeous, she'd captured way too much of it. Usually his sessions with Eddie were mostly shooting the shit and laughing, but with Amara he'd felt the pressure to perform but be distant. Not like being distant was possible around her. She always demanded he be on his toes. Dude, what are you up to tonight? Eddie pushed his shoulder. Let's do something tonight. Yeah, Amara chimed in. Let's get in that rooftop hot tub. Eddie arched a brow. Whatever you think, buddy. Listen, I was gonna invite you and some other guys over tonight, he said to Eddie. If Amara wants to come, that's fine. Amara pumped her fists into the air, but Eddie just shook his head at her. This is sacred man time, you know? You're lucky. Oh, please. She shoved his shoulder. I deserve a rooftop night. You're right. Eddie sighed, but it didn't sound like he liked it. My little sister deserves the swank treatment. Travis smirked and strutted toward the foyer, practicing his cool while attempting to focus on anything other than how a drunken night at his apartment might go with both Eddie and Amara in the mix. Already he'd seen how alcohol combined with Amara. Now if it were only Amara at his apartment, he knew exactly how it would end, in a way that Eddie would kill him for. But that wouldn't happen. Couldn't happen. No matter how much he wanted it to. Later that night, after a hasty beer run postwork, he picked up the apartment as much as he could before the friends started rolling in. It would be Eddie and Amara, and their other buddies Jake and Lex. They didn't know about Eddie's overprotectiveness, which set Travis on edge. He might have to knock out a friend to make sure that if anybody had a chance with her, it was him. He didn't know much about Amara yet, but he figured a bottle of wine wouldn't be a bad choice. But would that look like he was trying to seduce her? Seduction wasn't even on the table. If anything, he wanted to get to know her. Be near her. Even if it turned out to be the most hellish temptation of his life. A little after nine, Jake knocked on the door. His buzz cut looked freshly shorn, and he had a towel slung over his shoulder. Halty. They bumped fists, and Jake dropped off a 12-pack on the kitchen island, sliding into a high swivel stool. Before they could say anything, Lex wandered in, an overstuffed paper bag in his arms. Asshole wouldn't even hold the door for me. Lex glared at Jake. See if I carry your tampons next time. Jake laughed. Fuck you. I brought whiskey and some shit for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Travis peered into the brown bag as Lex set it down. Looks like all this stuff will be for tonight. What do you expect? It's guy's night. Lex punched Travis's shoulder, one of the few guys who could punch him and make it hurt. Guy's night with them usually turned into a drunken spectacle, even worse if they were at a bar, where usually one or all of them would head home with a hookup. Since Travis got serious about the business and training for this fight about a year ago, he'd put the brakes on the heavy drinking and hooking up. Though he wouldn't mind hooking up tonight. With one lady in particular. Guy's night plus one girl, Travis corrected. Eddie's bringing Amara. Jake cast him a curious look. Why? Ah, uh, he remembers how we party, right? 
Lex asked. Not safe for external eyes. Travis smirked. She wants in on the hot tub. Is she hot? Lex lifted a brow. Killer. But it's Eddie's sister so don't even act like she exists or he'll snap. Travis sent him a pointed look. Lex was a horn dog. there was no denying that. The man drifted between girlfriends like it was a professional sport. I forgot he even had a sister, Jake said. She hasn't been here for a hot minute, right? She was living on the East Coast. Travis put the 12-pack in the fridge and pulled out already chilled cans for him and his buddies. Moved back because of all the shit with their mom. As if on cue, knocking came from the front door. Travis pointed at Lex and headed toward the door. Remember. Hands off. But as he pulled open the door, he realized the words were more for himself than Lex. Get your asses in here, Travis barked. Eddie high-fived him while Amara gazed at him with fuck-me eyes. Or was that his imagination? He couldn't tell anymore. If she was gonna try to get into his pants, they'd have a real problem. He might be strong but he wasn't that strong. Welcome to the Holt bachelor pad. He shut the door behind Amara, watching carefully as her head tilted up and around to take in the surroundings. Like she was lapping up the details. It helped that the apartment by itself was cool and modern, which meant he didn't have to do much except buy expensive furniture and a couple of pieces of art. He kept it sparse and minimalistic so he could stay steady inside. Too much clutter drove him nuts, so the trendy approach of the apartment design, tall ceilings, clean lines, open floor plan, everything white and slate gray, appealed to him in a serious way. Guys, this is my sister Amara. Eddie pushed a pack of beer onto the island and jerked his head her way. She wanted to come check out the hot tub. Then she's gonna head home. He sent his sister a look. We'll see about the heading home part. She smirked, offering a hand to their buddies. It's a pleasure to meet you two. Both Jake and Lex mumbled something and shook her hand, his warning about Amara had worked. You like beer and whiskey? Lex raised his can. That's about all we've got in here. Not true. Travis headed for the dark marble countertop, rimming the far wall of the kitchen. He snatched up the bottle of wine and set it on the kitchen island. I didn't know what you drink, Amara, so I got the most expensive. She peered at it, a grin appearing. Not bad. Probably weren't too many choices at the Quick Mart, Jake cracked. Well, I like wine and whiskey and beer. She shrugged. So it looks like I will be spending the night. You should probably head home and keep an eye on Mama, Eddie said, looking strained. Why? You guys hiring strippers for later? She looked suspiciously among them all. I'd be down for that. You mean stripping for us or, Lex began, but Travis punched him in the shoulder. Eddie's face darkened. Don't even joke. Listen, let's take the cooler upstairs. Changing the subject seemed like the best idea to Travis. Since his buddies had never seen Eddie around Amara before, they didn't get it yet. What do we want beer for now? Everything. Jake put the cooler on top of the island. Grab some coke for the whiskey. Travis dumped some ice trays into the cooler, then started loading beers and cans of coke. Lex added the bottle of whiskey on the top like a garnish. Ready. Travis shut the cooler and Lex whisked it into his arms. See you losers up there. Lex cackled and disappeared into the hallway, Jake trailing behind him. Let's do it. Eddie grabbed a towel from his duffel bag and headed toward the front door. You ready, Mar? I gotta change into my suit. I thought you did that at home. I don't wear my bathing suit as underwear, dummy. She scoffed. Not like guys do. Fine. I'll see you up there. Eddie led himself out of the apartment. Amara smiled at him. Where can I change? Wherever you want. He gestured toward his bedroom. My room is there, or the bathroom is the other door. 
or right here in front of me. She smiled sweetly at him, so he turned away like it might be a defense against her charm. He downed the rest of his beer and then crumpled the can in his hand. When he turned she was still there watching him. Thanks for inviting me here. I know you all are weirdos about your guy time. All he wanted was Amara time but it was the one thing he couldn't get. It's no problem. I'm gonna head up so just take the elevator to the top floor. You can't get lost. Thanks. She grinned as he walked past to the front door, the curve of her lips staining his mind. The whole ride up the elevator he thought of her in there, slipping that gray tank top over her shoulders, tugging it over her head, letting it drop to the floor. Maybe she was in his bathroom, or maybe she'd chosen his bedroom. Fact was, she was naked in his apartment somewhere. Images of what her breasts might look like unsheathed, heavy and full and round, made his head fall back against the wall of the elevator. He groaned, his cock twitching in his pants. Fucking Amara. The elevator doors opened at the top floor, and he moved but froze before his foot left the elevator. His towel. Downstairs, slung over the back of the chair in his bedroom. Fuck. He needed it, and he should go back for it. But Amara was there. Alone. Naked, probably. And just as gorgeous as ever. Maybe he should abandon the towel. Pretend like he didn't care, didn't need it. He pushed the elevator's down button. Definitely needed the towel. As the elevator descended, he gnawed the inside of his lip. She was probably changed by now. How long did it take someone to get into a bathing suit? Seconds these days. Besides, what did he care about Amara's naked body? Nope, that didn't help things. Guilt roiled around inside him. He couldn't have these feelings for Eddie's sister, even if they were strictly physical. He needed to act like, and believe, she was no different than any other girl. The door slid open, and he hurried toward his door, fumbling with his key in the lock. It opened with a quiet whoosh, and he stumbled toward his bedroom. He wrapped his knuckles against it. Hey, you in there? Turning the knob, he pushed on the door. No response. Pushing farther, he let the door swing open a little. He peered inside, eyes adjusting to the low lighting of the bedroom. Amara's full naked backside greeted him, all curves and roundness, gorgeous lines and sweet caramel. His jaw dropped. She looked over her shoulder at him, the fuck-me eyes back out to play. He pulled the door shut, heart pounding. Leaning his forehead against the doorframe, he gripped the door handle so hard, his arms shook. Don't go in there, don't go in there, don't you fucking dare go in there. Sorry, Amara. He struggled to make his voice clear. I thought you were done. Forgot my towel. It's okay. Her voice came out muffled through the door. Like you haven't seen a naked body before. He drew a low, shaky breath. True, he had seen plenty of naked bodies before. None that he'd wanted to ravage as much as hers in recent times, though. The handle turned, and the door swung open. He didn't move, couldn't move from where he leaned. The glimpse of her nakedness had stolen his strength. He was useless now. Amara looked at him, grinning mischievously. I'm almost ready. She gathered her hair to one side, looking him up and down. Heart still pounding, his gaze careened over the soft arc of her hip as it transitioned from thigh to waist. He knew what she was hinting at. He could taste it like a shark near blood. He'd eat her up, all of her. From head to toe. He gulped. But she's off limits. That's a pretty fancy bathing suit. He sauntered past her, struggling to keep his eyes off her as he walked past. Don't you like it? She stuck out a hip. He allowed himself to look her up and down again. It was a one-piece with most of the center cut out. It had only a strip of fabric connecting the breastbone to the pelvic area, which meant it highlighted unnaturally the hourglass curve of her body. It's nice. He meant to continue to the chair where his towel lay draped but his feet wouldn't take him away from her. 
He gritted his teeth, unable to keep the beast of desire at bay any longer. Oh, that's your only opinion? Just nice? She lifted a brow. You look sexy as fuck, Amara. His voice came out low. She grinned, pulling her hair into a small bun. He reached for her hand, stilling her. Leave your hair down. She did as he said, blinking up at him with a sexy type of honesty, as if she waited for him to lead the way. He dragged his fingers down the side of her arm. Be careful with this. His hand smoothed over the curve of her exposed hip, and her breath hitched. He cinched her body to his, vision going spotty for the briefest of seconds. It's powerful. She laughed a little, but it faded fast. She danced her fingertips up the sides of his arms, making his cock twitch. So are these. She trailed her hands over the arcs of his biceps, the heat of her breath against his chin. He brought both arms around her, making his muscles bulge, she fit like a puzzle piece. He hovered his lips over her forehead, desperate for contact, but liking the prickling tension of withholding just a little bit longer. He pushed his hands over her hips. Can I test out the suit? She nodded. We better make sure it passes muster. He drew a ragged breath as he palmed the taut melons of her ass cheeks. He pressed her into him, rocking his hips in a lazy circle. She had to feel his cock by now. Pretty nice. His voice came out almost a growl, and he dipped his head to nuzzle the sweet hollow of her neck. She inhaled sharply, just as he sensed the front door opening. He stilled. The front door opened and then shut. He swore and dropped his hands. She cleared her throat, stepping away from him, reaching for the pile of clothes discarded on the bed. Halt where you at? It was Lex. Dude we need the ice. Travis rubbed his face, trying to efface the lingering memory of Amara's perfect ass cheeks singeing his palms. I'm coming. Amara arched a brow. Travis opened his mouth to say something, but had no idea what. Sorry, you're too fucking hot. He headed out into the kitchen, where Lex pulled a bag of ice out of the freezer. Starting with Jack, he said, as though this explained everything. He followed Lex out of the apartment, Amara's scent still whispering through him. They boarded the elevator, and the spell broke. This was turning out to be the delicious nightmare he'd envisioned, denying the simple urges he felt for Amara while in front of her overprotective brother, almost overruled by carnal desires at every turn. She was too hot. And she felt too damn good in his arms. This was a lot of trouble already. Chapter 7 Amara sighed, leaning her head on the side of the hot tub, gaze drifting toward the stars. This was exactly what she'd needed without knowing it, her quest to imbibe Travis had led her to the most unexpectedly satisfying rooftop evening. On the far side of the massive hot tub, Travis and Eddie splashed water at each other. Almost every movement from Travis yanked at her attention like an excited child, seeing him shirtless in the flesh was more thrilling than if she'd met her favorite celebrity. Sure he was sexy as fuck, but whenever he came near or spoke to her or let his gaze linger on her, there was a warmth that spread and settled in her. His steadiness. Shivers ran up her spine. Once her pussy had stopped throbbing in protest, the night had been a pleasant rotation of conversation, drinking, and roughhousing. Breasts floating just above the water, she watched as Travis put Eddie in a headlock. She aimed her tits right at him like a laser. Anything to get him to pay attention to her, again. Anything. Her nakedness had made him waver. Now she had to resort to the power of nipples and whiskey. Or whatever. She grinned and flipped over, finding a weak jet that pulsed near her pussy. Eyes drifting shut, she relished the accidental discovery. Dangerous stimulation for such sexual repression around Travis. Eddie gasped with laughter. Oh fuck no halt. She turned to watch the shenanigans. Splashing got louder. Come on, show me. Travis stumbled out of the hot tub, beckoning to Eddie. Come on. Eddie clambered after him, meeting him in a wide open area of tiled rooftop. 
On the far edge of the patio, Lex and Jake stood surveying the skyline, talking between themselves. At the commotion, they turned and took interest. Place your bets, Jake shouted into his fist. Amara rolled her eyes. Holt versus Valenzuela. My money's on Eddie, Lex said. He's been training. I don't bet on fighting. Amara floated closer to the action, hanging over the edge, frowning at the boys. Fighting had never appealed to her. Whenever she saw ads for televised fights, it made her think of her dad. How he'd take over the apartment with shouts and beer on fight night. The pulsing adrenaline as he watched men beat each other to a pulp. Thanks, buddy. Eddie smirked over at Lex. Good thing you're not betting money. Lex stepped forward, raising a hand in the air. Ready, set, fight. Eddie hopped from one foot to the other, looking antsy yet focused, fists in front of him. Travis looked more like a predator, something dark and mischievous coming over him. He swiped at Eddie. Eddie swung, and Travis grabbed his arm spinning him around, doubling him over from behind. Eddie cackled, Lex and Jake whooped, and before Eddie was pinned he slid out from underneath, smiling but flushed. Fuck your quick. Travis swung to hit and made contact, but not with as much force as Amara suspected he could. Eddie dipped and swung, hitting Travis's side. Amara winced. Lex whooped. Five points for Eddie. Travis's brow furrowed, but he never broke his concentration on his friend. Five. This game is rigged. He has a handicap, Jake said, taking a swig of his beer. Guys quit, Amara said, pulling herself out of the hot tub. Not now, Mar. Eddie faked a jab, then undercut, knocking Travis's abs. Smart. Travis relaxed for a moment, which made Eddie relax. Then Travis lunged and grappled with his shoulders, forcing him to double over. Eddie's knees knocked the ground, and Travis covered him, wrapping his arms behind his back, locking him between his knees. Jake whooped and counted down. Lex pumped his fists in the air at three. Travis released Eddie and stood, offering him a hand. Eddie shook it, sighing. Worth a shot, I guess. Next. Travis swung around to look at Amara. Her heart rate picked up. She walked as coolly as she could to meet him head on. You looking for a fight? He pushed at her shoulder, which made her stumble back a little. Or to learn a little self-defense, maybe. She grinned up at him. Mar, this is a bad idea, Eddie whined. Dude, don't even. I'm not gonna hurt her. Travis looked her up and down. The planes of his chest were a delicious distraction. What if they didn't fight and instead just rubbed up against each other again? Her gaze wandered over the width of his shoulders, down the hills of his biceps. There was no way in hell she'd be able to even make contact if she tried to hit him. I don't fight, she said, her words withering in his masculine energy. Not even to protect yourself? She hesitated. Do you know how to punch? His eyebrows lifted. I knocked a girl down in high school once. You did. Eddie's incredulity rang out through the rooftop. Why? She was bullying this girl in a wheelchair. Said some really horrible shit. Travis's face softened. She deserved it then. Totally. She raised her fists. I'll pretend you're her. He laughed. Okay, so hit me. Where? Anywhere. He gestured at his impossibly toned torso. She furrowed her brow, unable to conjure anything resembling anger when looking at his six-pack. But she'd try. Gathering every ounce of concentration, she channeled anger and fear and frustration and launched her fist toward him with a grunt. He didn't move, just looked at her with a nod. That was good. She let her shoulders droop. You didn't even budge. If I had budged, then you'd be competing professionally by now. He pushed her shoulders lightly. Try again. She balled her fists, took a stance, spent a moment contemplating his navel, and then swung. 
Travis intersected her fist, grabbed it, and twisted her arm hard enough to hurt but not bad enough to do any damage. Gotcha. She laughed, feeling the strain in her shoulder. That ended quickly. Halt, let her go, Eddie whined as he headed toward the other guys. Come on. But you can learn how to do that. Travis grinned at her, ignoring Eddie, keeping her in the twist. Maybe if I'm fighting a grandma. He shook his head. No. Watch this. Hit me again. She did as she was told, and he grabbed her fist, twisted her arm a different direction, and pulled her tightly against him. How do you get out of this? If she could imagine her arm not twisted at the odd angle, it was almost like they were spooning. Almost. Um I don't. He laughed. You can. He shifted against her, the heat of his groin exploding against her butt. Fuck he felt too good. Tingles traveled throughout her limbs, she felt like she might black out. If you raise your elbow right now, you can clock me in the throat. She tried it, surprised to see the perfect angle at which she was unwittingly poised to overtake him. Well shit. You're right. He loosened his grip, and she stumbled away from him, mind and skin ablaze with sensations. Have you ever taken a self-defense class? Nope. Seems like I'm overdue. He nodded, gaze lingering on her. Let me know if you want to learn. She checked out the boys, lined up at the fence on the far wall looking at the city. Skyscrapers and city buildings sparkled in the distance. Thanks Holt. You're so nice. He shrugged. I have skills I can share. Fair enough. But admit it. You're also nice. He grinned, dimples flashing, grabbing his beach towel from a nearby chair. Fine I'm nice too. Do you offer self-defense classes at your gym? He straightened. Used to. But didn't generate a lot of interest. How much did it cost? Holt Body Fitness was a veritable money-making machine. But in all the glitz and glimmer of his celebrity clientele and the shiny new machines, it would be easy to forget that some things needed to be not-for-profit. Had a regular class price. And for members, it was one of their included classes each month. She nodded, looking him up and down. Those classes were expensive. Travis was gorgeous and smart, but maybe he needed to learn something about social service. That's probably why there wasn't a lot of interest. But the rest of our classes do fine, Travis countered. Right. But those classes are about looking better. Women are conditioned to want to look better. But we're not conditioned to take care of ourselves in some really important ways. I mean look at me. I haven't taken a class, and I work with victims of domestic violence. He narrowed his eyes. You have a point. They should be free, is all I'm saying. More incentive to come. And you should have them. Your brand name basically requires it. All right, smarty pants. Keep up those ideas, and I'll be forced to hire you. She headed back toward the hot tub, his words thrumming through her. He snapped the towel before she stepped inside the tub, connecting with her right butt cheek. She sucked at her teeth. Damn that hurt. He laughed and stepped closer. Wanna fight about it? By Monday morning, Imara was a jumbled mess of nerves. Each day that went by without progress on the job hunt felt like an eternity, which made Mama's already stressful diagnosis sit even worse. Like every area of her life was crumbling at the same time. And the more frequently she went to the gym, the more she noticed skipping a day. Both Saturday and Sunday had been days off, so waiting until Monday meant she was jumpy and jacked by 9 a.m., desperate for a good cancer cell report or a bench press or a job call or anything. She'd accompanied her mother to her second-to-last round of chemo. The doctor had chosen a mostly conservative approach to her mother's cancer, since they'd caught it early enough. It didn't mean that Mama was out of the woods though. Amara wouldn't be satisfied until they got the all clear, and even then, maybe several years into remission before she might be able to relax. 
Amara had brought along her tablet to the hospital so she could look for more jobs while Mama got the life-saving medicine pumped into her veins. These visits were always quiet, routine. Amara had to sit out in the waiting room since the chemo unit controlled tightly for outside pathogens. As she scrolled through her tablet and the first hour bled into the second, her mind wandered to Travis. She shouldn't think about him. She blinked hard like this might jostle the thoughts free. Like that was even possible. She dreamed about him almost nightly. The guy was like a goddamn drug, one she was addicted to before even tasting. What sort of pharmaceutical nuttiness was that? Almost every morning she woke up wet and clenching as images of their lovemaking receded in her mind. She was going nuts. Over a guy. The fun Friday night had burned the midnight oil. After crashing on his leather couch she woke up to find Travis in the kitchen, cooking pancakes in an apron featuring a half-naked bodybuilder. Appropriate. She hadn't wanted to leave his apartment, would have done anything to stay on, maybe even take up residence there. She loved the orderliness of his space. It screamed rock steady, clean, organized. Fucking Travis. Her phone vibrated, startling her out of her Travis reverie. Unknown number. She snatched it up, answering with a professional, This is Amara Valenzuela. Miss Valenzuela. A woman's cool voice greeted her. This is Grace from Hidden Harbor. How are you? Her heart leapt into her throat. Very well, and you? Tell me I got the job. Tell me I got the job. Excellent. I called to follow up on our interview from last week. Yes. She clutched the edge of her seat. We'd like to formally offer you a position as the director of community organization. Are you still interested in joining our team? Her breath slid out of her and she sank into the chair. I am. I absolutely am. Wow, this is amazing news. I'm so thrilled. And so are we. We loved meeting you and are looking forward to an excellent career with you on staff. Amara and Grace exchanged information and agreed that she'd come in for paperwork the next day. When she hung up the phone, she was shaking. Holy shit. She placed her palm against her chest, feeling the swells of her breaths. Pride ballooned inside her, this was the job she'd been hoping for. Working with battered women in the city at a shelter and community education center. Yes. She wished she could tell Mama that instant. She and Eddie would be so excited. But she had to tell them in person. She fidgeted in her seat, desperate to share her news with someone. What about Travis? He'd been so interested in her success. Maybe she should text him. Like right now. She fished her phone out of her pocket and opened a new message. She'd saved his number in her phone in case of emergency. That had been the rationale at least to answer Eddie's curious looks when she'd asked for it. Really she was dying to talk to him more since their scorching bedroom encounter, and this was the perfect excuse. Morning, it's Amara. How are you? She waited, barely breathing for a response. The quiet sounds of the waiting room around her shrank away, the murmur of television, light coughing, rustling of papers at the reception desk. When her phone vibrated, she nearly dropped it in her haste to read it. Spectacular. What about you? Her heart clenched. Same. I wanted to share some news with you, thought you might be interested. His response was fast. You're joining the UFC after punching my guts out on Friday night? She laughed, fingers hovering over the keypad as she thought of her response. I was worried you had internal bleeding after those punches. But we can talk about that later today. I just got the call. I got a job. Congrats. Knew it would happen fast. You're a star. She smiled, rereading his message a few times. He was so good at building people up, caring about them. It was hard to imagine the pain she knew had been ingrained in him that must still be buried deep inside somewhere. Thanks Travis. See you later. 
She set the phone aside, looking at her tablet again, without really seeing it. Excitement burbled inside her, for the new job, for the new challenges ahead of her, and more presently, for the chance to be around Holt in a matter of hours, drink him up, savor his essence. Her own eagerness for Holt made something dark stir inside her. The same voice that made sure all flings stayed flings, and nobody got too close. He was a drug. The kind that she didn't need, but desperately wanted. Even if it led to jitters or mood swings later. She smiled, watching as a man at the snack stand poured a steaming mug from a freshly brewed pot. Sorta like coffee. So sexy he scorched, with a jolt of motivation each day. Except she'd never been so eager to down a cup of coffee as she was to get her hands on Travis. Chapter 8 Travis checked the clock every other minute during the Monday morning meetings. Normally he was restless when cooped up in swivel chairs, but today was worse. Way worse. Since 10 a.m., he'd been jittery, knowing without wanting to admit that it was because Amara had reached out to him that morning. Waiting for the hours between those texts and one o'clock felt like an eternity, as if he were back in high school waiting for a date to show up. Except she wasn't a date. She was Eddie's sister. A friend maybe at this point. A friend he had almost kissed and was dying to kiss. But just that. Nothing more. He checked the wall clock again as he listened to the trainers talk about their plans for the next quarter. A little bit longer before they broke for lunch, and then he'd be free to fret in peace. What about the community events? Travis rifled through his papers. Are we still looking into the discounted cardio classes for non-members? It was part PR stunt, part community service. Got his name out while also helping out, once a month here at the gym. The trainers exchanged glances, Lex included. Planning on it. The second Wednesday of every month. He nodded, checking off an item on his list, lingering as some half-formed thoughts burbled near the surface. Ever since Amara had called him out about the self-defense class approach, he'd been eager to reintegrate it into their lineup. We should offer self-defense classes again, Travis blurted, underlining something on his sheet. Seriously? Trainer Geo lifted a brow. Those tanked the last time we did them. Right. Because we charged for them. They should be free this time. The words rolled off his tongue surprisingly easily. Maybe it didn't have to all be about insane profit. All the trainers at the table looked at him with wide eyes. Must have been more of a departure from his mo than usual. We'll take turns teaching it. I'll pay you for the time, obviously. But it needs to be a consistent service. Travis nodded, feeling good about the decision. Agreement rippled through the staff room. After a few more matters were addressed, the meeting broke, and Travis bolted for the gym. He needed to zone out. The restlessness that had plagued him all day was exhausting him. He wasn't used to feeling so skittish, probably because he hadn't felt this way about a woman in a long time. And he couldn't even remember the last time it had hit him like this. He headed for the indoor track at the back of the building. Laps would do him good. Let him check out and refocus. Was he into Amara? The thought was scary. If he was seriously into her, which he fucking was, then this shit would get really sticky really fast. And how could he get out of it? He found a steady pace, eyes focused on the track in front of him. Run it off. Just run it off. If she were anyone else, he'd have had her in bed by now or at least heading over to his place on the regular. The fact that he had to not only put on the brakes, but get into a different car altogether, was infuriating. The type of frustration he hadn't imagined possible. He could eat her alive if he were allowed. And his excitement at seeing her today was worrisome. Really worrisome. A half hour faded into a blur as he made laps, his thoughts receding into a pleasant hum in the background. When an assistant waved at him from the doorway, he knew that meant Eddie and Amara had arrived. He jogged over to where he'd left his shirt and picked up his sweat towel, wiping off his face as he headed toward the front. 
A burst of cool air in the hallway chilled his sweaty skin. Slinging his towel and t-shirt over his shoulder, he entered the reception area. Eddie's eyes lit up when he saw him. Imara's gaze turned curious and shy. Buddy. Working overtime today. Travis high-fived Eddie and then Amara. Her gaze traveled up and down his body. Just realized I hadn't taken a run in a while. Are we ready for squats today? Born ready. Eddie followed him into the weight room, Amara trailing behind. Were her eyes burning a hole in his body, or was that his imagination? He knew he drew looks, but something about Amara confused him. Clearly she liked what she saw, even made it a sport to tease or tempt him, but why would she try if she knew Eddie would flip? It didn't make sense. Unless the only sense to be made was that she felt like he did, incapable of controlling the attraction. We need to celebrate today, Eddie said. Amara got the job she was gunning for. Travis looked over at them over his shoulder, ready to mention that he'd already heard, until common sense pumped the brakes. Admitting to Eddie that he and Amara texted seemed wrong somehow. Travis sent her a smile, and something in her gaze told him she knew what was going through his mind. Great job, Amara. I'll be sure to kick your ass in celebration. Her throaty laugh made his low belly tighten. I would have preferred balloons, but I guess I'll take the ass kicking. How's mom doing? Travis asked, tugging his t-shirt on once he'd cooled down enough. Something about wandering shirtless in his own gym, while his own overblown shirtless playgirl portraits hovered on the walls felt like overkill. Just had another round of chemo today, Amara reported. She's always fine the day of. It's just the next couple of days that will be the hardest. That's why she's got us, Eddie quipped. She got lucky there. He led them both to the same corner as always. A couple of beefheads lingered nearby, gathered around a bench press. Immediately he could sense that Amara piqued their interest. Let's do some warm-ups. Just some gentle squats. Mostly for Amara's sake, he demonstrated the exact move he wanted to start with. Butt out knees bent slow and steady. From most people's perspective, it was either hilarious or totally hot. The guys behind her turned their attention to the trio. Five more. Travis kept his eyes on the guys, who strutted behind Amara like proud cocks, feathers flared. Eddie must have noticed his focused attention, he turned to follow his gaze, seeing the dudes. Move along, Eddie said to the audience, not breaking his warm-up. Amara rolled her eyes. She probably thought it was overprotectiveness on Eddie's behalf, but Travis felt something more there. Yellow flags were dropping already. Avoiding drama was the primary goal in his gym, but he had to be on his toes for the slightest misstep. She can keep moving along, one of the meatheads muttered. Right over to my place after her workout. Eddie snapped up, turning to face the guys. That's my little sister. Watch what you say there, idiot. Travis's forearms prickled. Amara sighed, turning to look at the guys, then at Eddie. Ignore them. Come on. The blonde meathead who made the comment made a kissy face at Amara, though neither Eddie nor Amara saw it. Travis narrowed his gaze at him, one of the newer additions to the dosing group, a guy he didn't have much experience with. Not a good first impression. Keep it moving. Travis abandoned the warm-up session and trailed the guys. No harassing female clients while in the weight room. It's in the welcome manual, which I assume you've read. The meathead huffed but retreated to the far side. Travis came back to his friends, Eddie glared at the guys while Amara looked annoyed. Seriously. Eddie didn't break eye contact with the far side of the room. That asshole is asking for it. Forget him. Travis clapped his hands. Next set, lunges. He and Amara and Eddie moved into some easy reps. By the end of the warm-ups, Travis had joked and cajoled them into a light-hearted mood again. The dudes kept to themselves on the far side, though Travis didn't stop checking on them. He sent Eddie to the seated press and brought Amara to the floor-length mirror in the middle of the wall. Here's the shitty part about today, Travis said. 
You're gonna sweat a lot. Maybe I like that part, she countered. You wouldn't believe how much I'm beginning to look forward to these sessions. Same here. Those are the words every trainer wants to hear. She grinned. Lay it on me, Trav. She pushed at his shoulder, which made him laugh. Make me sweat. His mind rocked into high gear. He had a thousand different ways he could make her sweat. Most of them being sexual. Focus. Weight training. We're going back to the lunges. But with weights this time. He grabbed five-pound dumbbells from the rack and handed them to her, noticing the blonde meathead circling the perimeter again. Do the lunge as slowly as you can. I'll watch your form to make sure you don't overextend. We want your ass to burn. She laughed, kicking out her feet a little to prepare. Great. Flaming ass. Just what I always wanted. He crossed his arms and grinned, watching as she lowered herself into a worthy lunge. The curve of her ass into hamstring was mesmerizing, practically fine art. This was one of the highest perks of his job, being able to admire the human form in movement. Especially on someone as fine as Amara. He licked his lips involuntarily as he watched. Looks like someone knows how to move. The blonde meathead cackled as he walked by, ogling Amara's ass. Baby, can I get your number? Anger flashed across Eddie's face, and he leapt up from the seated press, storming toward the guy with his chest out. You don't talk to my sister like that. You were already told once, man. Eddie. Travis jerked his head to the side. Let me handle it. His friend could fly off the handle, and then where would they be? Too easily this guy could stain his reputation. Yeah, let the big bad boss man handle it. The meathead's chest swelled, his gaze ablaze on Eddie. Provocation at its finest. Alarm bells rang in Travis's head. Eddie would snap, just what the dude wanted. Amara stilled herself mid-lunge, resting on a knee, her wide eyes confused and fearful on him. Travis stepped in front of the meathead as he approached Eddie with daggers in his eyes, lifting his hand. Come on. Let's cool it, guys. Man, fuck you. Eddie called out over Travis's shoulder. You mean what your sister will be doing later? The blonde sneered, shouldering his way past Travis to push at Eddie. Eddie stumbled backward. Rage stormed Eddie's face, and he swung at the meathead. Travis intercepted it, pushing Eddie off to the side. Eddie, cool it. But the dude retaliated quickly, lunging past him and socking Eddie in the side. Travis spun around, hooking his arm around the dude's neck and tightening it as much as he could. The guy was like a rhinoceros, angry and bulky, and with plenty of momentum. He lurched and grasped at Travis's arm but didn't get far. Travis tried to drag the meathead away from his friend, who was ready to pummel the guy. Eddie, stay cool. Come on, guys. Chill out. The blonde guy struggled against Travis, though he was physically bigger than Travis, he wasn't nearly as trained. His friends formed a tight ring around them, and some of Travis's trainers hurried into the weight room once they spotted the commotion. Lex appeared at the periphery, watching with fiery eyes. The blonde swung around and Travis stumbled, loosening his grip. When the blonde almost escaped, Travis kneed him under his ass and brought him to the ground. He pinned him with a grunt, holding his forearm over the back of his head. Don't fucking move, he growled. You don't talk to my clients like that. I told you two times already. And that was your last fucking time. Bunch of pussies here. The blonde guy cackled despite being pinned. It came out a weak whinny. They told me this place was weak, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Looks like I was wrong. Go find someplace else. Immediately. Travis looked up to see Eddie pacing the far wall, Amara pleading with him. When I let you go, you leave. Do you hear me? Fine. Pussy. Travis pressed his forearm against the guy's skull until he groaned. You want me to smash your skull in front of your friends? The guy attempted to laugh, but it came out a cough. Go ahead and try. Looks like you're on a lot of drugs. 
Travis increased his pressure. You want to fuck up your life then fine. Just don't do it in my gym. Now go. He sat up, chest heaving, standing his ground and watching the meathead with a death stare until he stumbled out of the weight room. His friends trailed him. Travis nodded at Lex. Make sure he leaves for good. And add him to the list. Lex nodded and hurried out of the weight room, heading for the front of the building. The rest of the spectators quietly resumed their training, and Travis went to the far side of the gym, where Eddie and Amara were deep in conversation. Dude he's gone. He squeezed Eddie's shoulder. You okay? He nodded, sniffing. Might have bruised a rib, but I'm okay. Amara swung to look at him, eyes brimming with emotions. Thanks Travis. Those guys were disgusting. Seriously. He's a newer guy too, so he didn't have much weight room time. He passed our screening, but I think he was using. I'm sorry that happened. He patted Eddie's back. You feel up to training today? Eddie sighed, surveying the room. After a moment, he nodded. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Let's go easy on the ribs if we can. Attaboy. Shake it off. Eddie puffed out his chest and went back to the machine he'd been on before. Travis raised a brow at Amara. And what about you? I didn't get punched. I'm still game on. Though I should ask you the same question. You just brought down big dumb Brutus over there. I'd understand if you needed to go take a shower or something to wash his scent off you. He grinned, nudging her with his shoulder back toward the center of the gym. PFF. Please. My pheromones are stronger than his. She cast a sly look toward him. Oh. Should I consider this a warning then? He opened his mouth to respond, but nothing came out. Eddie's concentrating face nearby felt like a yellow flag. Depends on what you need to be warned about. He handed the dumbbells to her again. Now get sweating. She resumed the lunges with a grin, but her face clouded over. After some reps he asked, what are you thinking about? Surprise crossed her face. Oh, you know. I don't. That's what I asked. The corner of her mouth lifted. Just everything. He shrugged. Fair enough. I was wondering if we could try the self-defense class. He lifted a brow. For real? Any time. Like, maybe this week. She looked up at him, her face both innocent and imploring. I'm going to go in tomorrow to the new job to do paperwork, so some evening time would probably be best, since this job will be from 9 to 5. Sure. He raked through his internal schedule. He'd clear any evening for her, nightly even if she wanted. What day were you thinking? Wednesday. She grunted a little as she did her last lunge. God. Everything is burning already. Score. He took the dumbbells from her and set them back on the rack. Wednesday is fine. Maybe I'll come here after work. Like say seven. Her face was flushed, she watched him for a reaction. Yeah. I can teach you the basics in an hour. Perfect. She grinned. I'll probably start coming in on the evening, now that I work days. Whatever works. He was a chronic day shifter, but if working nights meant he'd get alone time with Amara, he'd switch his schedule in a heartbeat. Especially if Eddie wasn't going to be hanging around, it meant that he could push the envelope a bit further. Not far enough to get in trouble, but far enough to sat even a little bit of the raucous voice inside telling him to pursue Amara no matter what. He saw this tidbit for what it was, a window of opportunity. And he was ready to jump. Chapter 9 Hours after her workout with Travis, Amara couldn't stop seeing flashes of his face in her mind. Every task around her conjured him, shoving clothes into the washer sparked imaginary conversations with him, as though he were by her side. 
Even spotting a dark blonde guy on the sidewalk or overhearing laughter made her tense and hopeful that it was him. You're losing it, girl. She shoved the second load of laundry into the industrial washer miles away from his gym and his home. There was no way she'd run into him. Impossible. But yet just maybe. She was on her weekly trip to the laundromat to take care of the family's clothes and bedding. But today, it also served as a way to get some space before her first day at the new job and to figure out how the fuck to calm herself about Travis. Once the last load was in and spinning, she sighed, returning to the card table she'd made her stakeout. She picked up her nonfiction book to resume reading about the inspiring transformation of an inner city school, but after a few lines, the words blurred and she checked her phone. Just to look at the text exchange between her and Travis from that morning, where she'd shared the good news about the job. Somehow, rereading the words felt like communicating with him in the present. Could he feel this way too? She set the book down, staring at the blank reply space. Maybe she could talk to him. Like she had that morning. For some gym-related reason. Thanks for the great workout today. Can barely move. She sent it before she could think otherwise, watching horrified, as the message materialized as sent. She buried herself in her book again, brows furrowed. A reply came within the next couple of minutes. Need a wheelchair? Might be a new service I offer. She giggled. Sign me up. I have a long way to go before I get into shape. Feel like a pudgy mess. His reply was quick. You got a guy banned from my gym today. You're fine. She sat stunned, rereading the text over and over again. He was calling her hot, in a way. And maybe this was his way of opening the door a little, even around Eddie's looming presence. So it was my fault. There was a long pause. She worried maybe he hadn't picked up on the playful undertone she'd intended. As she typed out a clarifying message, his response arrived. Maybe I should have banned you. No more distractions for the weightlifters. Pressing her tongue into her cheek, she reread it a couple of times. She could imagine the playful look in his eye. God, she wished he was here with her. Please don't ban me. I promise I'll wear baggy clothes and stay in corners. You're full of shit. Don't resort to extreme measures, please. She pushed the phone away, butterflies swarming her stomach. She legitimately felt like she was in high school texting a crush. The rush was heady, overwhelming, dizzying. How long had it been since she'd felt like this? Since she allowed herself to feel like this? The allure of their banter was too much. She grabbed the phone again, typing out another message. So what are you up to this evening? Still doing squats at the gym. His reply came after a few minutes. Already reached my quota. Now I'm in traffic like the rest of LA. You? She grinned. Could she convince him to come meet her at the laundromat? That would be terribly lame. But she was desperate to see him. Waiting until Wednesday seemed an eternity. Washing clothes. Mentally preparing myself for tomorrow. I'm surprised you can do anything after your workout. I thought maybe you had someone typing these messages for you. She laughed out loud. A guy nearby looked up quizzically. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Ringing endorsement for Holt Body Fitness. A few moments went by. The buzzing of her phone made her straighten with anticipation. Be sure to leave a Yelp review about needing a wheelchair and dictating text messages. This is the publicity I've been waiting for. She snorted and shoved the phone away. This guy was too good. How had she overlooked him this whole time? He had been in her life, in the periphery, for over a decade, and only now she realized he existed. She suddenly felt cheated. The dryer buzzed, and she tended to the first load of laundry, lost in a blissful cloud of Travis. He made her feel good. Amid moving back to L.A., dealing with her mama's treatment schedule, getting under Eddie's thumb again, and the stress of re-establishing her career, he was a bright spot. But none of that really mattered either. 
He made her feel alive. Not that she even needed to feel alive. She felt damn good on her own. But Travis made something else spark. Something she hadn't even realized had been dormant inside her. By the time the last load of laundry was dried, she'd managed to lose herself in the nonfiction book again. When her phone vibrated with a new message, she was positive it couldn't be Travis. But it was. Are you nervous about tomorrow? She bit back a smile. A little. Mostly just anxious to get it all underway. Let me know how it goes. Her heart fluttered. I sure will. Thanks for caring. She floated out to the car, laundry in tow, feeling an extra firmness in her step. Was that because of Travis? Him believing in her wasn't necessary exactly, but it sure felt nice. The whole drive home, she imagined what it might be like to finally kiss him. The next morning, Amara awoke 15 minutes early. The excitement of starting her first workday, even if it was just paperwork, vibrated through her. It was a welcome bright spot in the tense routine of chemotherapy and waiting. She couldn't wait to get a feel for the commute, what her new space would look like, how her co-workers were, what the community was like. She hopped out of bed and hurried into the shower for a quick wake-me-up rinse, part of her daily work routine. After the jolt from the cold water so early in the morning, she crept around the kitchen to prepare a pot of coffee. Both her mama and Eddie were fast asleep in their own rooms and would be for hours longer. Mama slept in most days because of the chemo. And Eddie's schedule was so unpredictable, she was never sure if he'd be up at 7 a.m. or noon. While the coffee brewed, she breezed into her bedroom to slip into the outfit she'd laid out the night before. She grinned while she zipped up her pants and tucked in her shirt. God she loved life. The crispness of the early November morning was already calling to her, the pleasant morning commute, listening to talk radio whispering in her ear. Once she was safely in her smart business casual attire with coffee mug in hand, she hurried toward the SUV. The morning sun was bright yet gauzy, the sleepiness of the pending morning still palpable. She let the car warm up a bit, shivering against the dry chill of the L.A. dawn. Turning the radio to her favorite local talk radio station, she maneuvered into traffic, pleased by the relative light flow at this hour. That would all change in about 15 minutes, but for now it felt almost tolerable. The joys of waking early. Against the mesmerizing murmur of the morning talk radio, her mind wandered to Travis. What was he doing? Sleeping still? She'd give anything to see him wake up in his bed, see his hair ruffled, eyes sleepy. To cocoon against him in a warm nest of his scent and bed covers. She sighed. Maybe it had been too long since she'd hooked up. Or maybe the West Coast fall had her feeling nostalgic for someone to snuggle up to. There was only a small handful of boyfriends in her adult history, none lasting past the year mark. And that's how she preferred it. She didn't need a man, and if she ever settled down it would be with, who the hell even knew? She'd never even thought about it. But maybe it had been too long since her last something sort of more than a fling, and now she was imagining possibilities where none existed, like mirages in the desert. Twenty minutes into her commute, the traffic grew denser. By now it was 8.30, and she was only a couple of miles from her new workplace. Once the cars ground to a halt again, she checked her phone, aiming it for a selfie. She puckered her lips, snagging the perfect angle to show her meticulously applied eyeliner and a bit of cleavage. Not bad. Professional, yet sexy. Eyeing the picture, a wily thought occurred to her. Travis might like to see this. She swiped over to her messages and pulled up the conversation with Travis from the day before. She inserted the photo and sent it alongside, Good morning. Time to rock out. Heart pounding, she set the phone down. Traffic inched forward. Was this dumb of her? She couldn't tell anymore. He made her lose common sense. About five minutes later, her phone buzzed. She snatched it up hard in her throat. Morning. You look way perkier than I do. She tapped out a quick response. Let's see it. 
there was a lull, and then her phone began downloading a picture. She squeezed the steering wheel, willing the photo to appear faster. And then there he was, his breathtaking boyish face, one eye pinched shut, hair tousled yet deliciously handsome. She whimpered. Why was he so fucking hot? She waited until traffic ground to a halt before riding back. Breath caught in her throat, she responded, you're right. I win. You win the awake prize. I win the bed prize. She snorted, moving the car a bit farther along the freeway. Lol. Fine. We're both winners. But part of me wishes I could be in your bed too. A lazy smile overtook her face as she reread her reply. Then she froze. Fuck. She'd said your bed. She'd totally 100% meant to say my bed. Fuck suck fuck. Total Freudian shit right there. She hurried to type out a rectifying response when his text came through. Oh. She grimaced, easing ahead in traffic, heart pounding. That had been too blatant, though true, she most definitely had not intended to say his bed. I meant my bed. Sorry. No worries. Mine's big enough for two. Probably warmer than yours. She cracked a grin. Crisis averted. But still, he was dancing the line of platonic and something more. All his texts could be read as regularly friendly or hinting at way more. Maybe a little bit of intentional provocation could clarify that boundary. Ah, I need to sleep in my own bed. Can't do yours. She sent the text and crept forward in traffic. Her exit was just ahead. The first workday was only minutes away. Why's that? She grinned as she typed her response. I sleep naked. Boom. Time to see where he took that. She pocketed the phone and crept toward the exit lane. Her first workday was about to be fucking great. Halt whatcha looking at? Lex peered over his shoulder, sniffing out the source of his distraction. Travis buried his phone, clearing his throat. Nothing. Why? You've been staring at it all day. Got a new porno or something. Lex shoved his shoulder, reaching for his phone. Come on. Share. Travis rolled his eyes, pocketing the phone before he could get caught. His friend couldn't know he'd been staring at the private image of Eddie's little sister all day, the business casual pic she'd snapped that morning and sent to him while he'd been half awake and vulnerable in his bed. The woman was like a lioness. Fierce hungry designed to kill. He would be her prey. None of your business. Travis pushed at Lex's shoulders, urging him toward the back offices. They'd spent most of the morning training clients and going over paperwork. Eddie would be here soon, and he could never know that Amara had been texting him. That would land him in the doghouse for sure. Especially if he ever found out his sister had sent the word naked to him. Shivers coursed through him, emanating from his core. After he'd gotten that message, he'd rolled over and groaned into his pillow. Not fucking fair. The glimpse of her tits on display in her business casual outfit was a certain type of torture combined with that text. Had she known? She had to. She was no idiot. Mistaking her bed for his was probably all part of the ploy too. Wasn't cool. Or rather, it was totally cool, if only she weren't Eddie's little sis. He never responded to the last text, instead he'd rolled out of bed and hopped in the shower, eager to start his day with a quick jack-off session under the warm stream of water. His orgasm left him pulsing against the cool tiles of the shower stall, vision black and bright behind his eyelids, Amara's sweet scent somehow stinging his nostrils. Still over 24 hours until she came into the gym too. Might as well be an eternity. When Eddie showed up for his daily workout, they high-fived and got down to business as usual. Within minutes of Eddie's warm-up, Travis's phone buzzed with a new text. His chest tightened, hoping it would be Amara, and not one of the endless work texts that streamed through his phone on a daily basis. He peeked at it from his pocket. Amara. He kept his face neutral as he opened the new arrival. Update, the job is baller. 
I love all my coworkers. Funding is solid. New home for my passion. He fought a grin, pocketing the phone before he got wrapped up in the back and forth. He loved getting lost in it, but with Eddie in front of him, it felt like a secret taunt. Hey look, I'm texting your sister and you don't know it yet. So he fought the urge and let the phone burn away in his pocket, a weight that reminded him of Amara with every movement. Toward the end of the workout, Eddie's face lit up. Halty, I forgot to tell you something. What's that? Remember that girl I talked to when we went to the dinky bar? Holt nodded. He only remembered her bland friends and the way he'd sneaked off with Amara. Yeah. Liza or something. Lisa. Well, we're meeting up again this week. Alone. Travis grinned. Sweet bro. They high-fived. No more wingman needs. None at all. It's in the bag. After the workout was over, Eddie bumped fists with Travis and headed for the locker room. Travis wandered toward the break room to grab his lunch, pulling his phone from his pocket. On the home screen several messages awaited him, his mother, wondering if he was visiting the following Sunday, an unknown number that read, is this Travis Holt, and Amara with a photo message. He skipped past everything and opened Amara's message. Her sexy bronzed face greeted him, lips puckered and pink, winged eyeliner impeccable, fingers in a sideways peace sign with a caption that said, downtown lunch break. Behind her, in the background, one of his own advertisements dotted the back of a street bench. His silhouette filled the left side of the bench, and in stark letters Holt Body Fitness filled the other side. He grinned, eyes roaming the contours of her face, both nervous and desperate for this to go deeper. He spent the rest of the day imagining what it might be like to kiss her. By the following evening at the gym, Travis felt as if he could scale a vertical rock face, with how antsy he was to see Amara. She'd be coming into the gym at 6 instead of 7, confirmed after a whole evening and then following morning of more texts, more photos, more playful yet innocent flirting that both confused and provoked him. How was she the queen of double entendre? Almost everything she said could be friendly and insanely risque. Or maybe that's just how in deep he was. Any breath from her side could send him into a frenzy. At this point, he was hoping he could hold it together. A self-defense class could easily turn sexual if he let it. It wasn't a practice he condoned with clients, but with her he doubted he'd stick to the rules. His game plan wasn't solid. He didn't know where he'd take her, how he'd act, what he'd say. He'd figure it out when she got there. Play it cool. You're good at that. You practically invented that. It was true. Just not with anybody he'd wanted as badly as Amara. At 5.45 p.m., while Travis reviewed the employee schedule at the front desk, Amara sauntered in, gym bag slung over her shoulder. When he looked up, he couldn't hide the surprise on his face. Come straight from work? His gaze wandered over her well-fitted black suit pants and a feminine button-up, with maybe one too many buttons left undone on the top. She eyed him grinning as she approached. Sure did. I'm gonna go change real fast. You wanna work out after I teach you how to kick some dude's ass, right? Obviously. She winked at him and walked past him to the women's locker rooms. He drew a low breath. So that's what today was going to be like. She's hot for you. The receptionist Melanie nudged him, winking dramatically. Stop it. He clenched his fists. She's just a flirt. You don't know her. I don't know her, but I can smell it a mile away when a girl wants to bone. He laughed. Don't most girls who come in here want a bone? She shrugged, scribbling in the scheduler. Probably. Travis moved his attention back to the schedule. Okay. Let's move Lex to days on Wednesday next week. Melanie nodded, adding the change. Anything else? I'll be taking the closing shift for a while. He felt guilty saying it, like maybe Melanie could guess it was linked to Amara. Put me at 12 to 9 only starting next week. 
That way he could still train Eddie at their regular time and scoop up Amara's nightly visits. Every night. She cocked a brow. Yeah. Start with the next two weeks, then we'll go from there. She shrugged and modified the schedule. Someone pinched his sides from behind. He spun on his heels and saw Amara grinning up at him. Ready? He fought the urge to scoop her into his arms. Her smile was infectious. Totally. His jaw clenched as he sized her up from behind. Short, tightly packed, thick thighs that practically begged him to run his fingers up and down their lengths. She wore that fuchsia sports bra from the other day, the one that made her breasts look round and heavy. Where'd you get this? He tugged at the loose racerback tank top that said Holt Body on the front. It was way too big for her. Eddie. She pulled her hair into a ponytail and then up into a messy topknot. I wanted to join the club. He led her down a hallway toward the back weight room usually reserved for MMA training and mock fights. With no fights scheduled, they could have a more intimate session. See what sort of lessons were really learned. You're already in the club. Didn't you know? She grinned slyly. Just wanted to be sure. How was work today? Awesome. Her eyes lit up. I'm in charge of coordinating a full schedule of events. Some of them are being handed down to me, but I already have ideas for new things I want to incorporate. Like what? She tipped her head to one side. I want there to be more community engagement. Events, talks, educational opportunities. Things like that. She nodded her lip for a minute. I've been wondering if you and the trainers might be willing come and give a self-defense class sometime. His eyebrows shot up. She didn't stop innovating. That's a great idea. Excitement washed over her face. Really? Yeah. It makes sense. We go to where they are. They learn a little bit about moves that might save them. How could I say no? Especially when his own mother could have benefited from lessons like that at one point in her life. Guilt slashed through him. She grinned. How much would you charge for a day? He shook his head. Free. Her eyes got round. Seriously? That's so generous of you. I'll bring Lex and we can make it fun. And you know, helpful. That's amazing. She squeezed his arm, smile widening. A lot of the women there are really nice and would love opportunities like this. I just know it. I want some inspirational speakers to come in too. Women who have lived through violence or abuse of any kind. Like my mom? Amara's face dropped. Oh. Really? He nodded. She's happy now. But it was really rough for a while. She has some stories. And she likes to talk about it, actually. She'd be a really good speaker. Her face scrunched up in thought. I'd love that. Can I get a hold of her sometime so we can talk? Of course. I'll give you her number afterward. They went into the darkened weight room. Empty as suspected. Lights tripped on as they walked in, illuminating the room with bright white light. Fancy. She checked out the room. When her gaze landed on him, goosebumps emerged. This is my MMA training camp. He pointed at the octagon nearby, which looked strange and abandoned without throngs of people surrounding it or fighters hopping around inside. But for now it's ours. An eyebrow lifted. Right. So you can fake abuse me back here and nobody will know. Exactly. He grinned. He wanted to do a lot of other things even more. His gaze skipped up and down her body, a reflex he couldn't control. Her curves begged him to look. What do you do in the training camp? She nodded toward the octagon. Mostly help guys learn how to fight MMA style. But more recently, I've been using it to prepare for a tournament. What sort of tournament? 
I'll be headlining the fight, he said, trying to keep the swell in his chest from knocking her over. Kind of like a UFC tournament, but a different league. It's a matchup with one of my oldest rivals. I haven't competed in three years so it's a big deal. Oh. She didn't look as impressed as he'd imagined she might be. Why has it been three years? I got injured. He shrugged. Tore my ACL. And then it became the perfect opportunity to start this gym, so I took it. I've been out of the game for a while. Well shit. Will you win? He stepped closer, letting his bravado bleed into her. Of course. Her gaze drifted to the octagon again, and something strange passed between them, something he couldn't put his finger on. So what are you gonna do to me? She cocked a hip, eyes brimming with mischief. His fingers twitched as he thought about snagging her at the waist, knocking that hip against his own. Have you ever been at the club, and some douchebag wouldn't leave you alone? She scoffed. What girl hasn't? I can show you what to do if he starts creeping. Oh yeah? Travis nodded, heart rate kicking up a notch. Let's say we're at the club. This insanely quiet, bright club at the back of my gym. I've been creeping on you, and I'm drunk and not taking a hint, and probably not nearly as ripped as I actually am. She smirked, nodding. Okay. It doesn't even matter if it's the club or not. It can be anywhere. It's any unwanted advances. Travis wrapped his arm around her waist, spinning her around and snagging her close. Her body formed a delicious seal with him. So a guy bear hugs you. What do you do from here? She sighed, squinting. I thought you said unwanted advances. He tightened his arm around her, mind growing cloudy. I said we're pretending. Act like you don't want to secretly get into my bed. So maybe you could be not Eddie's sister, and it would be totally fine if I pinned you against the wall and had my way with you. She giggled, cheeks flushing. Okay, fine. I bite. What do I do? His eyes fluttered shut, relishing the feel of her warmth against him, the softness of her belly under his arm, the nearness of her scent. With your right leg, step to the outside, and then backstop my knee. She put her leg out and behind him, connecting with the back of his knee. Good. That'll knock me off balance. Then you bring your left elbow up straight toward my face. She brought her elbow up, stopping before actually clocking him. He loosened his grip, stepping back. Great. That'll get me away and off you, so then you can get the fuck out of there, or call the police, or text Eddie or whatever. She nodded, tucking a wisp of hair behind her ear, looking flushed. Sweet. That's a good one. Though I might actually call you instead of Eddie. He bit back a grin. I'd be okay with that. A heavy moment shivered between them. When she spoke again, her voice was softer. I like the bear hug part. Maybe we should practice that again. He cocked a brow. You need a hug? He'd give her all the hugs she wanted. Maybe I appreciate you helping me. He pulled her into a hug, this time from the front, every point of his body touching hers, alive and on fire. He squeezed her tightly, brow furrowing as he fought to save her every last millisecond. She sighed deeply in his embrace, arms tightening around his waist. When they broke, Amara looked up at him lazily, eyes drifting open and shut. Damn Travis. You give good hugs. She had given him a good hug, in half a boner. No, I think you give good hugs. They shared a private smile, one that made him feel as if they'd been together for years. He kept his grip tight around her, like the feel of her against him, the warmth of her seeping into him. Time shuddered to a stop as he gazed into her eyes, breath shriveling in his throat as something sprang to life between them. He needed to kiss her. No matter the consequences. Travis cinched her closer and dipped down, smoothing his lips against hers. She shivered in his arms, welcoming it, tipping her head back to greet him. Her fragrance was divine from so close, velvety lips a sinful treat that he'd been imagining for far too long. 
and it was better than he'd imagined. They kissed until he needed to break for air. And then they only paused foreheads pressed together before he dived back in, tongue pressing into her mouth, hungry and probing. Their kisses were fervent and desperate. Intense. Unexpectedly so. This is what you were afraid of. After a few moments his warning bells went off. He could be here all night making out with her, and that wouldn't be good for anyone. Even worse if someone came back here and discovered them. Is this part of the self-defense training? Amara smiled weakly, her breath coming out in short puffs. Just for you, he said, loosening his arms, unable to back away. Part of my new approach. I like it. She squeezed his arm, biting her lower lip. Those fuck me eyes back in full form. Exactly the type of look that made his already wavering willpower fade into nothingness. And with Amara, he needed a lot more than willpower if he was going to keep his shit together. Chapter 10 Amara lay on the bench press seat, giggling. She and Travis had been working out after the self-defense lessons for over an hour, but with the constant conversational detours, the session wasn't nearly as focused as it would have been during the daytime. Okay, seriously. Travis sent her a stern look. You have to resist me. She sat up, placing her feet on the ground. Travis knelt before her, deep chocolate eyes mischievous as he watched her. Impossible. She fought a grin. Now what do I do? Bring your leg up, and I'm going to push down. This is like resistance training. I want to see how strong you are. She nodded. She tried to raise her leg while Travis kept a flat-palmed hand over her ankle, resisting her. She grunted, unable to overcome his strength. Despite the concentration, she couldn't stop noticing the arc of his bicep, or the smooth tan chest peeking out from behind the tank top. After she gave up with a huff, he nodded, looking maybe pleased. Or maybe she was just the weakling she feared. Not bad. Let's do the other one. Amara felt the warmth of his hand over her left ankle and shook her head. You should go higher. Why? That ankle hurts. He slid his hand up to her shin, gaze curious on her. Is that better? A little higher. He narrowed his eyes but pushed his hand higher. What about here? It actually hurts all the way up until here. She grabbed his hand and covered her thigh with it. Her heart pounded wildly, loving the teasing, the temptation. He exhaled slowly through his nose, eyes fastened to his hand on her thigh. I gotta watch it around you, huh? He squeezed her thigh barely. Maybe so slightly she'd imagined it. Maybe. Nice try. He moved his hand back down to her ankle, leveling her with his gaze. Something fiery burned there now. I actually believed you for a second. She cackled and then lifted her leg, resisting him as hard as she could. When she puffed and released he nodded, looking distracted. He rested on his heels. That was good. She pointed her toe at him, grinning. Are we done and worked out? done. He rubbed the back of his neck, studying her. What are your plans for the evening? Amara tipped her head back and forth, making a big display of thinking. Well I don't know. I was thinking about getting some dinner right now. She picked absent-mindedly at the bench cushion, glancing up at him innocently. Take the bait, take the bait. Oh yeah? Travis stood, resting his hands on his hips. I guess that means we should go grab dinner together. She beamed. Technically his idea, no matter how much she'd been hoping for it all night. Perfect. I'm gonna go change. She hopped to her feet and then skipped off to the locker room, as energized as though she was beginning her day. Travis really put a pep in her step, and a lot of other places too. Travis was a titillating challenge for her, not just because he was the sexiest guy alive, but because the stakes were high. No other fling had been so fun or risky. If she had any ounce of her right mind left she'd stop pursuing him. But she physically couldn't, 
any attempt to look away from this man felt deeply, intrinsically wrong. Those kisses earlier that evening only proved it. She did a body rinse only, redressing in leggings and a slouchy sweater, leaving her hair tousled in the topknot. When she came back out, Travis was the epitome of gym chic. Oversized sneakers, the expensive shiny kind, and long workout shorts coupled with a black hoodie pulled over his head, the longer strands of his hair peeking out from the front. Gym bag dangling from a shoulder, he wrapped up his conversation with the receptionist as Amara approached. Slapping the counter, he slid his gaze toward her. A smile flickered at his lips. I'm starving. She nodded toward the doors. Want me to drive? Hell yeah. I didn't drive in to work today. Maybe you could give me a lift home too. She laughed. How did you get into work then? I caught a ride with Lex. He spent the night. She lifted a brow. Guy's night is every night, huh? He shook his head, pushing through the main doors and holding it open for her. Nah, it's not like that. He's going through a rough time. So why didn't I see him in your bed pictures you sent me yesterday? She loved to poke him. It was practically her job now. He snorted. Like I'd out myself so quickly. They shared a warm look, one that made the butterflies kick into high gear again. It didn't matter how much trouble she'd be in if Eddie found out she was trying to fuck one of his best friends. Travis was the only guy who had lit her fire in years. It would be illegal not to pursue it. Inside the SUV, Travis took the liberty of flipping off the radio and plugging in his iPhone. Amara side-eyed him. I hope you have good taste in music, buddy. I do. He cast a lopsided grin. Trust me. It was hard not to when he talked like that. Down-tempo hip-hop with an electronic undertone sprang to life. Travis settled into the seat, looking content. This is exactly what Eddie would pick. She maneuvered the car out of the Holt body parking lot toward the freeway. Is that a bad thing? No, I happen to like his taste in music. So you're lucky. Now where should we go? There were hundreds of places they could find dinner at 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. The only question was, which would Travis pick? This was a litmus test of sorts. God help her if he suggested salads and steamed vegetables. Travis bobbed his head along with the music, face partially obscured by the hoodie. Let's go to the diner on Esplanade. You know it. She did, full of delicious greasy diner fare. Her belly rumbled in anticipation of a juicy burger. Hell yeah I do. She accelerated as she merged onto the freeway, joining the medium clip of traffic. Between his smile, their easygoing banter, and the suggestion to go to the diner, hell, they might fuck in the back of her car. Tell me Travis. She sipped at her water as she drove. What do you do besides work out all day and manage your own business? He laughed. Not much these days. Well there are guys nights too I guess. Right. Can't forget those. Between my business and the rooftop hot tub, that's my life in a nutshell. He sighed, looking out the side window. Every second spent thinking about the damn gym or training for that tournament. Seems like you've been growing the business a lot. For opening a handful of years ago, you've come a long way. Thanks. I think so too. She eased onto the exit lane. Are you happy with it? He gnawed at the inside of his lip as he looked out the window. Yeah. But I dunno, there's something missing. What could be missing? You've got clients' employees' profit. I know. It seems strange. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, let me know if I can help, she said. It's hard being a businessman. Was way easier when all I had to do was show up and punch people. She snickered. You could always go back to that full time, right? Not anymore. Why you've gone soft? He looked over at her curiously, 
as though trying to judge whether she was joking. Her stomach tightened. Shit. Wrong thing to say. He shook his head and his gaze drifted away. Sorry. Bad joke. She grimaced, heading for the exit that led to the diner. There's nothing soft about you, Travis. I punched you the other night. You're a brick wall. It's not that. You made me think, that's all. Hopefully that's a good thing. She tossed him a dazzling smile, hoping that she hadn't unwittingly offended him and ruined the evening in one fell swoop. Would be typical for you, though, Amara. He sat up in the seat, brows furrowed. I think. I don't know. It's weird because, like, five years ago, I would have been pissed if you'd said that to me. And now it's fine? Yeah. He laughed a little. I could see myself getting angry, but like a former Travis. Just now when I said that? Yeah. He nodded, eyes still distant. But I wasn't angry. At all. It sort of hit me. Seeing who I was versus now. Sounds like you've been doing some healing. She eased onto the off-ramp. The diner was only minutes away now. Or is that not very manly to admit? I'll take it. He took a deep breath. Fuck. Are you always like this with people? Her mouth fell open. Like what? You like to dig in deep. She fought a grin. Well, I'll be honest, it wasn't my intention. But what's the point of talking to someone if you can't get down a few layers? Lots of people live their lives without digging into the layers. Are they better off for it? He shook his head, eyes on the passing boulevard. Definitely not. I like to understand people. What makes them tick? How they arrive in certain situations? She shrugged. You're fascinating by the way. Not any more fascinating than you. Their eyes locked briefly as she hung a right turn into the diner parking lot. Heat scorched through her, something desperate deep and pure. Inside the diner was clamorous and bright. The smell of fried food hung in the air, making Travis salivate the second they stepped inside. A mostly disinterested waitress led them to the last available table. We got here just in time. Travis slid into the booth, lowering his hoodie. I'm gonna eat five burgers. Amara snorted, flipping through the menu. Are you serious? I could be. He skimmed the menu, knowing already he'd get the same thing he always got. There was no other way. It was the perfect combination of tastes in life. There's so much crap on here, she murmured, but he understood she meant crap in a positive way. She might have only been back in LA for a few weeks, but he was really beginning to understand her quirks. Her reactions and different laughs according to the situation were practically a new focus of study for him. He'd ace the test for sure. Do you know what you're getting? She glanced up at him, her dark eyes sending a shiver through him. Of course. He pushed the menu aside, leaning closer to her over the table. Extra large burger, no onion, three pickles, extra cottage cheese on the side. Nothing regular, huh? She winked at him and continued reviewing the menu. He took the opportunity to gobble her up while she wasn't looking. His gaze wandered over her full lips as they silently mouthed certain words, the angle of her jawline, the wisps of hair that fell across her forehead. He was suddenly so desperate to kiss her, he had to turn away. He cleared his throat, running a hand through his hair. When she set the menu aside, he felt her gaze on him before he looked up. What did you decide? Black and blue cheeseburger. She grinned like a devil. Extra fries. At a girl. I need to take after my trainer. Her gaze drifted to his hands as he fiddled with a napkin near the middle. Nervous habits died hard, he needed to occupy his hands, especially face to face with Amara. Just so he didn't do something he'd regret. Damn. She let out a low whistle. Your hands are so hardened. 
He stopped tearing at the napkin, extending his fingers. Oh yeah? Fighter's hands. She grinned again, tracing a caramel finger along the inseam of his index finger and across his palm. His breath caught in his throat. You must get so much pussy. He laughed, leaving his hands flat against the tabletop as she continued to trace invisible designs over his open palms. Why do you say that? She leveled him with a stern look. Come on. Women love feeling protected. Even better if it's by an MMA champ. Would you? She hesitated, avoiding his gaze. He hadn't even meant to ask the question, it had sprung from his mouth, the inevitable byproduct of his wild attraction to her, and Amara lowering his defenses. What are you asking me? She finally mustered a grin, meeting his gaze hesitantly. She might tease him non-stop at the gym, but could she carry the ball herself? If you'd feel protected. By someone like me. Her cheeks flushed, which made him feel dizzy. He might not make it out of the diner alive. Of course. I thought you were asking something else. Like what? Like if you could get pussy from me. Silence passed, somewhere between excruciating and titillating. She continued her patterns over his hands, the blush receding. He grabbed her fingers and stilled them in his fists. She snapped her gaze up to his. Well? You should know the answer to that question already. Amara's brow lifted, and the air in his lungs evaporated. He might have to bend her over the table in the middle of the restaurant and have his way with her after all. Are you trying to kill me? He ran a thumb over her knuckles, cock twitching in his shorts. Just a little. She laughed low and throaty. After a moment, a gum-popping waitress arrived to take their orders. After she removed the menus and scurried away, Travis cleared his throat, returning his hands to the middle of the table. Amara eyed him curiously. They shared a long look. Then Travis flipped his hands, fighting a grin. Amara resumed tracing patterns that made his heart tighten and thrills race under his skin. Once they'd steered the conversation away from pussy and back to more light-hearted things, the food arrived, steaming and juicy, and buried in its own grease. With joyful eyes, Amara dug in. Just as Travis was about to take his first bite, his phone rang. Eddie VZ. He answered the phone with an annoyed sigh. You better have a good reason for getting in the way of my first bite of this hamburger. Eddie laughed from the other end. Sorry bro. Where you at? The diner on Esplanade. He popped a fry from Amara's plate into his mouth. Are you with Amara? Travis stopped chewing, his stomach shrinking to a nut. Yeah. How had he found out? Ha. Huh. There was a long pause. You guys decide to go grab a bite after her workout tonight? Basically. He tried to sound casual, fuck he hoped he sounded even a smidgen more casual than the terror inside his chest. You salty you couldn't join? Nobody invited me. And I'd kill for a burger. I've been holed up at this publicity event for hours now. Sorry to hear it. He swallowed the fry. You two are getting close, huh? Travis looked at Amara, who watched him like a deer in headlights. Fuck. What are you talking about? Don't be jealous, bro. You know you're my number one Valenzuela. Eddie snickered. Fucking better be. Always. They exchanged goodbyes, and Travis pocketed his phone. This was worse than he thought. Just going out to eat with her raised eyebrows, and Eddie didn't know the half of what Travis wanted to do with his sister. All good? Confusion roiled in his stomach. He nodded, taking a bite of his hamburger, allowing himself a few moments to think as he chewed. I told him I was here once we got here. Amara swirled a fry and ketchup, looking sad. I didn't think he'd call you. I kinda didn't want him to find out we came together. Why? She hesitated. You know why. 
He clenched his jaw, eyeing his burger, not trusting himself to look at her. Which was all the sign he needed. Eddie's suspicions were raised, and if they weren't after that conversation, they would be soon. He'd be on them like flies on meat. It would be one thing if Travis didn't feel this way about Amara. Then she'd be easier to resist, to joke around with. But treating her like a platonic friend was way out of the question now. Practically a scientific impossibility. He'd settle for nothing less than pinning her to the wall and devouring her with kisses, pressing himself deep inside her, bathing in her essence from the inside out. Couldn't they do it once and get it out of their system? The thought plagued him through the rest of dinner and followed him as he got back into her SUV. As she pulled onto the highway, he'd done a pretty good job of rationalizing that having sex with her once, only once, would be fine. Nobody would find out. They'd never have to talk about it again. Eddie wouldn't know. You never answered my question from earlier, Amara said. Hip-hop music thrummed quietly from the speakers as she glanced over at him, eyes playful. Which one was that? I asked you what else you do besides working out and running a business. I answered you. No, you told me what you have been doing. I was asking what you like to do. He smirked. Is this the hobby section of the personal ad? Maybe. She looked at him slyly. Girls want to know these things. His belly flopped. Those eyes of hers were dangerous. He felt the testosterone spike again. Definitely had to fuck once and get it out of his system. Well? He sighed, making a display of thinking as he leaned against the middle console. He sought out her free hand from her lap, rubbing his thumbs over her smooth knuckles. She tensed beside him like she was surprised and trying to keep from gasping. I read palms. She laughed. You do not. You just want to touch me. Fine. He sealed his hands around her right hand. His cock stirred in his shorts. Also a very dangerous sign. Holding hands with this girl qualified as erotic. I like to go into the mountains. Seriously? She sounded a little incredulous. Yeah, why? You don't think I know how to nature? He pinched her side and she giggled. I gotta get out of the city every once in a while. Or else I go nuts. Where do you go? Anywhere. He looked out the window, her hand still in his. I like to go hiking and stuff. Take my truck, load it up, go get lost somewhere. And I thought that big black truck you have was just for show. Would be typical for L.A. His apartment was approaching, which meant he'd have to make the leap soon. Invite her in. It'll happen. What do you like to do? I like to go to dancing. Her devilish grin reappeared. And I write. And I like nature too. Maybe I could come with you on one of your retreats. His eyes widened. He hadn't expected that, but maybe he'd been surrounded by the wrong girls for too long. Seriously? Most girls I know don't want to get their shoes dirty. I'm not big on bugs, but I could do it. She shrugged, pulling into his apartment complex. Besides, it seems like you know what you're doing, so if a bear attacks, we'd be fine, right? That's where the MMA training helps. He cracked a smile, his heart rate spiking. It was now or never. She eased the car into the cul-de-sac in front of the entrance, bright light spilling from inside. He looked over at her, loving the flecks of green in her dark eyes. He reached out to stroke the back of her neck, admiring the flutter of her eyes as her head lolled to the side. Why are you always flirting with me when you know I can't do anything, he murmured, searching her face for the answer. She flushed and pulled away, but he held on tight to her hand, pressing closer. You flirt with me too, you know, she said, her voice breathy. Don't act like it's a one-way street. You're the one who kissed me tonight. You should come upstairs. Her breath stalled, and her expression changed into something unreadable. Why? To talk. You know, hang out. 
for the first five minutes at least. Come up. Her gaze softened, drifting to the clock. I don't think I should. I need to be back to check on Mama since Eddie is working late. Disappointment flickered through him. I won't make you stay the night. Like that's even an option. She scoffed. Eddie would flip. She shook her head, regret in her eyes. I know if I come up there with you, I am not going to leave or go to sleep on time. It's my first week on the job. She gnawed at her lip. Can we this weekend? Like turning off a light switch, the plan blinked out of existence. His head cleared. Shit. It's cool, Amara. We'll hang some other time. Have a good night. He squeezed her hand again and hopped out of the car, then grabbed his bag from the back seat. On his walk through the glistening foyer shame stung him, left rippling trails all over his body as he realized the bargain he'd made with himself and how close he'd come to ruining his friendship with Eddie. You're lucky she said no. Maybe she had no idea what he was planning. A nighttime visit would have only led to him fucking her over the back of his couch after forcing Lex to go up to the rooftop of course. You got your free pass. The more time spent with her, the more temptation there would be to push the envelope. Something about her begged for it. Already he'd siphoned a mini makeout session out of the mix. And that was while trying to control himself. And if he couldn't have more, he should have nothing. There was no middle ground. He'd known it from the beginning, and it was even clearer now. He had to cut her out. Reduce it to professional training visits. Courteous texts. Nothing more, effective immediately. His friendship with Eddie depended on it. Chapter 11 Amara awoke the next morning bleary and disoriented. She'd been too amped to fall asleep right away, even after helping her mom with tea and getting ready for bed. Once Amara was safe in her bedroom, she'd spent hours imagining the feel of Travis's hands around hers steadying her, the blaze in his eyes in the car as she dropped him off. Against everything wise and sane in her body, she had sent him a picture before bed. A photo somewhere between innocent and risque, her in a whole body tank top sitting cross-legged in bed. No bra on, smirking sexily for him. With a caption that read, I should have come upstairs. She knew it had been dumb. Totally a bad idea. But off it went, to join every other dumb impulse leading her back to Travis when all she should do is stay away and avoid the shitstorm. He made it so hard. Every cell of her body begged to be near him. And maybe so did his. And stumbling out of bed at the ripe hour of 6am, showed her that Travis had never responded to her sexy picture. He'd seen it too. Almost immediately after she'd sent it, it had registered as seen. Disappointment followed her to the shower. As she dressed for her workday in her dark, cramped bedroom, anxiety knotted her belly. Confirming that Travis felt the same way about her was both a victory and a burden. So they were into each other, but now what? With Eddie in the way, this was a dead-end street. But that didn't make the ache inside her any easier to bear or any easier to ignore. Once she slipped out of the apartment with coffee in hand, the drive to work was bright but slow. She'd gotten a little bit of a late start, which meant that the freeway was backed up by the time she got on. She sighed, flipping through radio stations scrolling through her phone, anything to distract herself from the confusion. What did she even want from Travis? Shivers ran through her. She wanted more than to just fuck him. She knew he could get that anywhere. And maybe he did, if her brother was right about him. Of course Eddie knows what Travis does. You should listen to your brother. Eddie putting two and two together the night before still bothered her in a big way. Her only game plan prior to that had been to flirt with Travis as much as possible, totally under the radar. Eddie would never find out. But after their first ever meetup, Eddie was already onto them. Why had he called Travis? They were too good of friends. It had bothered Travis too. She'd seen the shift in him, the stoniness in his eyes as he talked to Eddie. 
Only one way to find out though. She pulled up her text messages, navigating to the thread with Travis. Warning. Hope her day is great. There. Innocent, platonic, totally fine. Now if only she could get through the rest of the workday without checking her phone every 10 minutes to see if he'd responded. Travis had been dreading Eddie's workout all day. He knew his dinner with Amara would be first on the agenda. He'd been preparing his unaffected responses all day, tense and hopeful that Eddie would let it lie fast. As long as he never caught on that Travis had propositioned his sister, he'd be fine. When one o'clock rolled around, Travis greeted him by the receptionist's desk as usual. They high-fived. What's poppin'? He shoved his friend's shoulder. Ready to sweat? For sure. Though I might get my evening run in a little earlier today, if my car breaks down like I think it will. Travis laughed, trailing him into the weight room. You finally got a beater? Seemed like a good deal when I bought it. Just to get me around the city, you know. He shook his head, heading for the far corner for warm-ups like always. Of course Amara gets the nice car, and she ain't even been home a month yet. I work my ass off for years and get the hoopty. Sounds about right. Travis's mind flashed torturously to the picture Amara had sent him the night before. The side boob in that picture had plagued his dreams even. He cleared his throat. Please don't talk about Amara now. But she works downtown and drives farther so of course I should give it to her. He shook his head as he did squats. Pain in my ass. Travis peered behind him at some newcomers, then turned his attention back to Eddie. Any news on that girl? Eddie grinned, oblivious to his intentional subject change. We're meeting up this weekend. And? He shrugged, playing it cool. And we've been texting. A lot. Look at you. And he's sexting yet? Eddie scoffed. Of course. That at least meant that Eddie might not be as attuned to Amara's whereabouts as normal. Maybe the diner incident would slide. You're about to get laid, brother. Travis handed him some weights to continue his warm-ups. The return of Eddie VZ. You know it. Eddie beamed as he lunged, holding the weights on each side. Finally, Travis's friend was looking like himself again. After months and months of bad eating and weight gain, he was getting trim and glowing. Like he used to. While Eddie warmed up, Travis roamed the weight room, checking that everything was in its place. A small group of girls had eyes on him when he strutted past. A flare of giggles erupted once he'd passed. Eddie nodded in that direction. Why don't you go ask one of them out? I thought you already had a date with that girl. I do but I mean for you. Eddie clapped him on the shoulder. It's time you found someone. Then we can double date. Travis smirked. Buddy, I'm not dating. Yeah yeah I forgot. Colty don't need to date. Not with this big sexy gym. Travis shoved him toward the benches. It's not like that either. Eddie's eyes widened. Are you calling a red alert? Do you need my help? How long has it been? He laughed. Dude. I'm fine. How long has it been? Travis pinched an eye shut as he thought. It had been an eternity, really. But he didn't want to admit that to his friend. A hot minute. Eddie shook his head as he lay back on the bench. If it's been longer than me, then we've got a problem. Don't you use Tinder? For a booty call. Travis hovered his hands under the bar as Eddie lifted up and off the safety. Fuck no. Eddie huffed with each of the first five reps. Then he latched the bar up. He took a deep breath. I'm disappointed in you. Why? You have this gym and all of this at your fingertips. Eddie gestured around incredulously, eyeing him from the bench. Bro, you need to tap into it. The picture Amara sent him the night before burned through his mind. 
He winced, he knew exactly where he wanted to tap into. I've been busy. This running a business shit takes a lot of work. You know how it is. If it's been longer than a year, I am taking you out tonight to fix this. Travis laughed but it felt forced. It had been way over a year. But even the thought of hitting up his standby ladies didn't sound appealing. It hasn't been that long. Travis hovered while Eddie did the next set of reps. Besides, you focus on your girl. Don't get distracted worrying if I'm getting pussy or not. Eddie finished the set and replaced the bar. He huffed and wiped at his brow. Fine. But we're going out this weekend. I'm down. Bring Lex and the guys. I want a full-blown outing. Yes, sir. Travis grinned. Gonna bring your sister like last time. He tried to make it a rib, but really he was desperate to find out. Eddie glowered. Fuck no. She needs to go do her own thing. I know she just moved back and all, but damn. His face darkened. And you need to quit hanging out with her. His belly tightened. We don't hang out. I already told you. She comes here to work out, and we got dinner the other night because we were both leaving at the same time and crazy hungry. Besides, she seemed lonely. More like ravenous. Eddie softened. Whatever. It's weird if my friends start hanging out with my sister. You know. Why? The question popped out of Travis's mouth before he could think better. Cause you're my friends. Those worlds don't mix. They should stay separate. I don't want to know what she does with her friends. Travis avoided his gaze, grabbing some dumbbells from the rack. He struggled to keep his face neutral, to calm the frenzy in his chest. I know. I'm not trying to hang out with her. He handed off the dumbbells, feeling a lot like a kid in trouble. She'll find her own crew. She won't be lonely for long. Eddie's tone sounded like he was reassuring himself now. And if she don't, well, I guess she'll go back to the East Coast. Right. Travis's chest tightened, fear sparking deep inside him. He crossed his arms over his chest, focusing on his friend's form as he started the curls. What the fuck had he been thinking? Shit with Amara would never work out. If Eddie didn't kill it, her career would. What should I tell her if she wants to get dinner again after a workout? Eddie shook his head, glowering again. Tell her you're busy. Okay. Whatever you say, boss. Eddie eyed him before starting his next rep, his jaw set. Something in spoken hung there. And Travis worried that it was the one suspicion he was desperate to avoid. While Eddie grunted through reps, Travis wandered to the far wall to use the pull-up bar and burn off some of the anxiety. The message was clear, stay the fuck away from Amara. Even if Eddie couldn't glean his deeper desires, the innocent surface ones were bad enough. His phone vibrated in his pocket as he did pull-ups, and immediately he hoped it was Amara. Even though he wouldn't respond, a little note from her always brightened his day. But that had to end. He tacked on five more pull-ups for good measure. He needed a break from her to clear his head. The texting and the flirting were getting out of hand and engaging in them would only lead to bad outcomes. When his feet touched the ground he reached into his pocket but stopped halfway. No looking. He wouldn't even go there. Not while Eddie was around. And if he was serious about it, he had to miss her sessions for a couple of days too. The idea felt wrong to him but it had to be that way. Otherwise this thing between them would never stop ballooning. It was taking all he had to not respond to the sexy pictures and the sweet texts. If he saw her, he'd break. No progress could be made that way. When Eddie wrapped up, Travis would finish his business and get lost for the rest of the day. There were plenty of things he needed to do in the outside world. And he'd get started immediately. Later that evening, Amara pulled into the parking lot of Holt Body earlier than expected. Her own anticipation of tonight's workout made her barrel through traffic almost dangerously. 
Travis was a strong motivator, as a trainer, and as a potential lover. Shivers coursed through her. He hadn't responded to her all freaking day. She was dying to hear from him. So she'd force a response out of him when she laid eyes on him, finally. See if she couldn't get a follow-up to those scorching kisses he'd given her the night before. She hopped out of the SUV, slinging her workout bag over her shoulder, adjusting her shirt and hair as she prepared to sweep into the front hall. She loved it when he was standing at the desk at the end of the hallway, broad and built, like an MMA-sculpted statue. Every other girl in the world probably thought the same thing. A bit sobering. She pulled open the door, pushing her sunglasses back onto her head, heels clicking softly on the sparkling floor as she came inside and her vision adjusted to the lights. At the end of the hallway, one of his receptionists sat, phone pressed to her ear. No Travis. She scanned the weight room through the glass walls, searching out the face of every bulky manly body in there. No Travis. Breezing up to the receptionist's desk, she waited patiently as she wrapped up her phone call. When her big doe eyes turned to her, Amara let the words spill from her mouth. Is Travis here? The receptionist grimaced. No, he's out for the day. Oh. Her face fell, but she tried not to convey the disappointment tremoring through her. Fuck, she wanted so badly to ask why. Demand to know his whereabouts. Ask if she'd seen him using his phone at all that day. If he'd been responding to anyone else's texts. That's okay. I think I'll do the Pilates class today. The receptionist nodded, pushing the appropriate pass over the countertop. Enjoy. Amara snatched up the pass and then stormed to the locker room, rationalizations circling inside her head like a funnel. He thinks he'll ignore me? Stop flirting with me? After that incredible breakthrough we had last night. Betrayal sizzled through her hot and fresh, and then dissipated. But what can the two of us even do? He knows we can't flirt forever. It has to lead to something or nothing. She dropped her gym bag and started changing, eyes fastened to the door in front of her as her mind worked over the situation like a batch of dough. Maybe he'd been called away, some business meeting, some last-minute thing. And maybe it was poor timing that this was the day it had happened, the day after they'd crossed a new frontier in flirting. But if she knew men, she knew it was no coincidence. He'd planned it, he had to. And then if she called him on it, he'd be confused and apologetic, acting like it was unrelated. Like this was on her. PFFF. Men. She tore off her shirt so hard, she almost ripped off a button. If this was what he was like, then he was no better than any other guy, and certainly no mature man like he'd led on to be. These were the tactics of boys. Eddie had been right all along. Travis was just a regular dude who ghosted. Avoiding hard situations, sidestepping confrontation, acting like nothing existed. Amara smirked as she tugged her workout shorts out, satisfied with the conclusion. He was an asshole, actually. What was he so afraid of? It was a text. It was a workout. Nothing to be afraid of, unless he was an asshole. Stuffing her bag into a locker, feeling smug and correct, she thought about a text she might send. No need to avoid me. I'll stop coming. You can have your gym back. As soon as the imaginary text crossed her mind, she felt like an idiot. What the fuck was she thinking? She was the real lunatic, thinking things like this when all Travis did was not be in his gym once in the history of mankind. Heaving a sigh, she shut the locker, pressing her forehead against the cool metal. These were the situations that made it hard to be a woman. This was the emotional vortex men created. And she wasn't even trying to date him, she just wanted sex. If she knew what was best for her, she'd let it go. She'd focus on her new job. She'd find her community, a nice group of friends. Not chase after the one guy she could never, not in a million years, have. Chapter 12 The next day, Amara knew for a fact that Travis was orchestrating the grandest sidestep in all of male history. It had to be. 
There was no other logical explanation. It didn't help that no matter what she tried to focus on, her mind always slid back to him. The way his big, deep eyes had seemed to lick her from head to toe that night in the car when he asked her to come up. The feel of his rough hands around hers, even his touch could make her wet. And though she felt slighted, betrayed even, she craved his presence. His rock-steady energy. That mischief in his eyes, the way he could root her to her spot with one look. Fuck. Just drop it. But she couldn't. When she finished up work she took the freeway toward home, instead of the gym. She wouldn't rush there if he wasn't going to be there, but she'd make it over, eventually. She toyed with her phone, contemplating another text. She'd sent one that morning again, mourning Trav, against her better judgment as always. But hell, she figured she'd keep up the tradition. After all, she was only being friendly. After a half hour of traffic, she'd convinced herself not to write him. She'd gotten the message, loud and clear. He was doing what needed to be done. And good on him for having the strength to say no to himself. Clearly she was the weak one here. The one driven by base impulses. Geez, one pair of sexy biceps and she'd rearranged her whole life. Even taken up a workout routine. This was nuts. At home she pushed into the apartment, pleased to find the smell of toast in the air. Mama was shuffling into the recliner, a small plate on the table beside her. She was in the phase between treatments where her energy returned, bit by bit, each day. Until the next session at least. Beaming, Amara headed toward her. Mama. Tavies incribal hoy. She kissed her forehead, then tossed her purse onto the adjacent couch. Thank you, Miha. Actually, I look like my balding brother. She collapsed into the chair with a deep sigh. Ay, Dios mio. That was all the energy I had. How was your day? Amara sank into the couch, assessing the TV. More early evening judge shows. Good. Your brother made us un almuerzo rico. Corn soup. He took me to the lab for my tests. Amara nodded, looking her mother up and down. Good. I guess he can stick around for a few more weeks then, huh? Her mother laughed hard, unexpectedly, which made Amara grin. The good days reminded her that there was an end in sight. The chemo might suck, but Mama was making progress. Where did Eddie go? She wished he was home so she could get some intel about Travis. But maybe it was better he was gone. Working downtown. An expo for something. Amara smirked. Very detailed. So probably he'd be gone for the rest of the evening. She squeezed her mama's shoulder as she walked past her to the kitchen. Scanning her mental to-do list, she searched for something to cross off while she put off going to the gym. And then it hit her, she had to call Travis's mom. Ever since he'd casually mentioned that his mom might be a perfect speaker for whatever she was planning, she'd been dying to set up a time to talk to her. Travis had even passed her the number so she could call. Amara unearthed her phone from the bottom of her purse and dialed the number. A woman's husky voice answered after several rings. Hello. Her stomach fluttered, suddenly nervous. Hello, is this Mrs. Holt? Formerly, yes. She sighed. Amara grimaced. She hadn't thought to get his mother's new last name or maiden name. You don't know me but I'm a friend of Travis. More like a starstruck fan, desperate to get him to notice me. My name is Amara, and I work at a women's shelter and help center in the city. When I told him what sort of work I do, he mentioned that you might be someone I could contact for a presentation or something like that. Hmm. Go on. It sounded like she took a drag of a cigarette. Amara explained the nature of her nonprofit and what exactly she had in mind. Giving an inspirational and friendly speech to groups of women looking for guidance. Being honest, real, and raw in front of other women. Travis's mom had plenty of questions and saucy interjections, and Amara couldn't wait to meet her. The woman who had raised Travis. She could barely imagine what his mom might look like, but Amara already knew she was tough as nails. 
Let's meet up, sweetie. I'll tell you the whole story, we can make a little presentation, and I'll make you coffee. What do you say this Sunday? I'll be home after an auction in the morning. We can meet at my apartment and talk for hours if you want. Amara grinned, doodling on a blank piece of paper as she listened. Great. Just tell me where to show up. Travis's mom told her the address, and then they hung up after a warm goodbye. One thing down, plenty of things to go. Including the day's gym visit. After a quick nap that left her feeling calm and centered, she was ready to tackle Holt body. She put on the standard workout clothes, sexy enough while practical, and headed for the car. Dusk was already heavy at 7.30 p.m., which meant the crisp winter months were unavoidable now. She shivered, pulling her track jacket tighter. Sure would be nice to cuddle with Travis over the winter. It was a thought that wouldn't leave her as she drove to the gym. Damn it, it didn't matter how much she knew it was a bad idea, she fucking needed that man. At least once. Even at the risk of her brother's outrage. Pulling into the parking lot, she didn't see his car anywhere. Already a bummer. Grabbing her handbag she strolled into the gym, whistling while tensely awaiting confirmation of the dreaded truth that Travis was Mia again. Pushing into the brightly lit main hall, Amara found no trace of Travis at the reception desk. She gnawed at the inside of her lip, surveying the weight room as she headed for the receptionist. It was a thick crowd tonight. She might easily overlook him and couldn't get a good handle on all the faces as she walked toward the desk. So it looked like today was a wait day. Hi there. She smiled brightly at the receptionist, who offered a blank smile in return. Amara Valenzuela. Just gonna do the weight room today. The pretty blonde receptionist nodded and marked something in the huge agenda before her. Go on ahead. Enjoy your evening. Ambling toward the weight room, Amara wondered what Travis's relationship really was with all those pretty young receptionists. He must have hired them all personally, sat with them in interviews. Was there any sort of litmus test? If she believed her brother, Travis was probably sleeping with all of them. There had to be a reason they were all so uniformly pretty and lithe. She entered the weight room considerably less pumped for her workout than when she'd arrived. Whatever. Travis's powerful silhouette loomed above her in those goddamn perfect portraits on the wall. Ah. She'd kill to have one of those hanging in her room. Like in her teeny bopper days. She might never stop fangirling. It was a part of her new reality in L.A. She'd get over it someday, probably. Maybe in five years, the fantasies about sex with Travis would eventually recede to a dull roar. She dropped her stuff in a pile at the cubbies by the far wall and draped her track jacket over her belongings. She got to work on a basic mashup of warm-up exercises, feeling disjointed yet airy without Travis to bark his commands at her. It was like she'd forgotten everything. A jock sauntered by, lifting a brow at her. She stared him down hoping her lunge didn't falter. That would be embarrassing. A couple of ladies across from her sneered at the guy too. Maybe he was one of the weirdos her brother was always talking about. She settled into a nice routine, finally able to calm her mind and zone out a bit. Voices registered as swells and dips in the background. The other gym-goers were flashes of color around her, blurs of people and fabrics. Until someone came into the front hallway, dressed in a black hoodie, black track shorts, shiny black sneakers. Hood pulled low over his head, jogging toward the front desk. Her world sharpened to a painful focus, Travis. Throat tightening, she looked at the ground. Fuck suck fuck. She didn't want him to be here. Then it would hurt even more when he ignored her, or confirmed the deep fear that their brief history of flirting was officially dead. She switched sides on the leg exercise and turned away from the glass partition, focusing instead on the far corner, gritting her teeth against the desire to observe him. She didn't last long. When her gaze finally drifted back to the front desk, he was gone. The receptionist was calmly speaking on the phone again. Her belly flopped. Had he left or had she imagined him? 
Drawing a deep breath, she crouched on the floor, resting her forehead in her hands. Push through or go home. Maybe a couple more exercises before she jumped ship and went home to sleep. Already she was eager to get this day over with and start on the next one. She popped to her feet and grabbed a lighter set of dumbbells, then got on the ground for some hip lifts. A couple of reps into it, a swell of voices told her someone new had come into the room. There was some laughter, some high fives. Hopefulness pricked her. She exhaled and inhaled with the reps, focusing on the far wall. Concentrate. Her lower belly began to burn, and she pushed harder. Hey. A familiar deep voice greeted her, and then Travis appeared at her side, hood still over his head. He looked down at her, eyes serious and distant. How many of these have you done? She huffed, dropping her ass to the ground. Thank God you're here. Three million, why? He cracked a grin. Do a couple more, then go to those leg lifts I showed you. Before she could respond, he headed for a group of guys in the corner. Mouth open, she watched him walk away, so relieved she wanted to cry. The difference was palpable with him near. She gulped, rolling onto her belly, beginning the backward leg lifts he'd shown her the other day. As she sighed and sweated through a painful amount of reps on the leg lifts, Travis wandered back over and knelt in front of her, playing with something in his left hand as he surveyed the room. She looked up at him, but he didn't acknowledge her, just knelt there, fiddling with what looked like a smooth stone, gnawing on his lip. While he perched, ignoring her, she examined his leg hair, pleased by the color and frequency of it. Leg hair was important. Some guys had ugly leg hair. After one more rep she collapsed to the floor, groaning. Turning herself onto her back, she looked up at Travis, even saw him glance down at her for the briefest of seconds. I think I'm good on that one. Great. You feel like you got a good workout? She stared at the ceiling, confusion nodding her belly. Yeah, I think so. Have to say it's a little less effective without you here. Oh, come on. You don't need me here all the time. She wished he'd look at her. Just give me that jolt one more time. Sure, I don't need you here, but it's better if you're here. He glanced down at her, looking perplexed. Did you come yesterday? Yeah. He nodded and sniffed, looking across the room. He hopped up unexpectedly, intended to something a weightlifter needed. She propped herself up on her elbows, enjoying the break, desperate to get him near her again. When he wandered back over, he seemed hesitant but fiery. His eyes were clouded with something unknown. You mad I wasn't here? I dunno. She yanked her eyes off him toward anything else. Why'd you come in tonight? I forgot something for a meeting I have tomorrow. Business, of course. So his plan had been to avoid her entirely for a second night. Probably he was weaning them, letting the attraction fizzle and wither until it became unnoticeable, an unsavory blip in their mutual history. Will you help me do the leg pushes? If he wanted to ignore her, fine. She would go out with a bang then. He nodded, surveying the room as she hopped up and lay on a nearby wide bench. Lifting her legs in the air to make a T angle, she waited for him to stand in front of her in just the right spot. Then she began the up and down leg lifts, helped by him propelling her feet back toward her as her legs neared the floor. Killer for the core and lower body. Okay, so can you tell me something, she groaned through a representative, from trainer to trainee? What is it? His face was unreadable, somewhere between perplexed and neutral. What are my, she grunted as it grew harder to lift her legs, my problem areas. What do you mean? You know what I mean. What I should focus on. Weight loss abs thighs I dunno. The words were rolling off her tongue now. Where I fall short. His face grew stern. Amara, you're fine. Just keep up your routine. Oh come on Travis. She did one more representative, then let her legs fall to the sides of the bench. Chest heaving she narrowed her eyes at him. You own a gym. You work with people in all stages of personal betterment, every day. 
Tell me. What areas do I need to work on? He shot her a long glance that looked almost like a glare. I told you already. No, you didn't. Don't I need a flatter belly or a tighter ass? She jiggled her thigh exaggeratedly. Look at this. Doesn't this need to tone up? He looked across the gym, then back down at her. No. She pursed her lips, loving the spike in tension. She was totally happy with her body, but couldn't he admit that too? Or my hips. She rolled onto her side, showing the curve of her hip like a pinup model. Don't these need some work? His jaw flexed, he stared down at her with hooded eyes. Amara. Feel this. She grabbed his hand and placed it over the swell of her hip. The touch of his skin warmed her. I mean honestly. This level of provocation was almost a drug. If only she could make him crack. If only he'd kiss her again. His gaze swept across the gym to the remaining few patrons, and then he reached down to her other hip, grabbing both sides in a healthy squeeze, pulling her toward him with a quick jerk. She gasped, exhilaration trembling through her, panties moistening instantly. You're a perfect ten. His voice came out a growl. You're sexier than fuck, and you don't need to change a thing. Her chest heaved as she lay on the bench, looking up at him. The warmth of his palms on her exposed hips made her mind cloudy, like foggy glass after a shower. Well thanks. Quit rubbing it in. He squeezed her hips again, more gently this time, and then stood and stormed away. She watched him go, hand falling to the floor with exhaustion. His touch had been fire, and she only wanted more of it. She lay there staring at the ceiling for too long. When she finally peeled herself off the bench, the gym had emptied out, it was almost closing time. She gathered her things sluggishly, feeling both heavy and in the stratosphere. His hands on her hips would be burned into her memory, it might take her a year to get over that. Damn you, Travis. When she pushed into the cool air of the parking lot, she noticed Travis's truck parked nearby. Mr. Boss Man was in the building. She clucked her tongue, hanging around the front doors for a bit. Some of the other gym goers filed out, nodding at her. After a bit, the receptionist breezed past. Amara strolled in a circle in front of the doors, humming under her breath, trying hard not to feel crazy the longer she waited. After about ten minutes, she decided this was enough creepiness. As she turned to leave, Travis headed toward the main doors, head down, bag slung across his chest. She froze. What now? He pushed through the doors, slowing when he spotted her. What are you still doing here? He looked at her suspiciously, as if she might have a knife hidden somewhere. But stabbing him into admitting their lurid non-affair wasn't her game plan. Waiting for you. She didn't know what else to say. He shook his head. I've gotta go. Don't be like that. She reached for his arm, though he didn't look at her. Did I piss you off earlier? I'm sorry. He stared into the parking lot, jaw flexing. It's cool. Don't worry about it. But there was so much more to it than that, she could taste it like blood. Do you want to go grab something to eat with me? I'm pretty hungry. And I'd like to talk about it. He stilled, turning to her. I can't. Don't you eat anymore. Or you don't want to with me. He watched her for a moment, then said, If Eddie finds out I took you to dinner again, he'll kill me. Oh, you won't be taking me out. I'll pay my own way, thank you. That's not what I'm talking about. Then what is it? He ran his thumb over the strap of his gym bag. I can't, and you know it. You're that afraid of my big brother? I'm not afraid of him. His gaze darkened. I respect him. Frustration bubbled up. This was a lost cause, they'd always come back to this same catch-22. Fine. Can't respect a guy by having dinner with his sister. This is a fucked up world we live in then. Let me remind you that you kissed me the other night. He was silent as he eyed her. It's more than that. 
Trust me, I'd take you out if you were anybody else. Oh, that's a huge relief. Her brother was a brick wall between anything that might exist. A wall too tall to climb. Sounds like a convenient excuse. It's not an excuse. It's the way it is. If I go near you, Eddie will kill me. He's like my brother. But don't you want to go near me? She stuck out her chin, looking up at him teasingly again. She couldn't resist. Just put your hands all over me again. You already did once. He might be your brother, but I'm not your sister. His jaw flexed and he squeezed the strap of his bag as he watched her. Don't. Something flashed in his eyes, a warning. She huffed, exasperated. Fine. I can take a hint. She turned on her heels and strutted away, anger roiling inside her. Over her shoulder she added, I only have time for men who can say yes to me. It wasn't fair. She wanted Travis and he wanted her, so why couldn't they move forward? It was clear how into her he was, his sudden coldness recently was more than obviously due to Eddie. But what could she do if he wouldn't break? It was fun and games for a minute, but after a while it would be desperate and illogical. Go where you're wanted. She got into her car and slammed the door shut. If only Travis wasn't the sexiest man to walk the planet, she might have an easier time going elsewhere. But it had to be this way. Because Amara wouldn't beg. She was officially done chasing a man who wouldn't say yes to her. Chapter 13 Travis awoke Sunday morning in a sweat. And with a hard on. He groaned, rolling over to his belly, pressing his cock into the mattress as he began piecing together the dream he'd been in. Amara had been there of course. And maybe those fucking amazing pussy presses had shown up too, his pet name for the leg pushes she'd requested Friday night at the gym. She must have known it was his weak spot. Just like everything else she did around him, constantly pushing him to the edge. Burying his face in his pillow, he let the quiet sounds of morning settle into him, cock throbbing against the bed. The shower sprang to life in the distance, Lex must be up and moving already. He lifted his head to peer at the clock. 9 a.m. Early, considering their late night with Eddie and Jake. He tensed against the bed, imagining Amara beneath him, what her soft kisses might taste like in the morning. He licked his lips, pleasant fantasies mingling with the memory of her scent, which he could practically smell. Maybe that's how bad he wanted her, bad enough that he could conjure her. Not a good way to start the day. He flopped onto his back, gritting his teeth as he absent-mindedly stroked his dick, tensing as he ran through their last encounter for the millionth time. It was simultaneously the biggest success and the most miserable failure. He'd both fallen prey to her and pushed her so far away that she might never come back. But she shouldn't come back. He balled up his fist. Beating off to her memory was not a way to reinforce this decision. Reaching for the phone, he checked for new messages, disappointed when nothing showed up from Amara. Be glad, he counseled himself. This way it would become true. Be thankful she's giving up. It was the second day in a row he hadn't heard a peep from her, not since he'd blown her off at the gym on Friday. No matter how hard he tried to be thankful, all he could be was sorry. He'd fucked up big time. Sure his actions seemed like the right thing to do on paper, but deep inside there were warning bells going off. Red alerts screaming wrong way. Everything in his being pushed him toward her. Even the threat of Eddie couldn't dissolve the attraction. It was there, thriving. Fuck. And there, in the vulnerable clarity of mourning, it became so obvious. He had to go after her. He had to try. Consequences be damned. In the pit of his stomach, he knew this had been coming. He gathered his pillows to his face, groaning into them, his breath making his cheeks hot. Why her? Why Eddie? Why this most sacred relationship with his bro? He rolled out of bed, stretching as he wandered toward the kitchen for a glass of water. 
his calves were tight from yesterday's intense training, and one of his opponents had socked him in the eye. His cheek felt tender, maybe there was a black eye waiting for him. The hum of the shower was a steady rhythm, one that calmed him as his thoughts ramped up to a rolling boil. He'd call her. Tonight, maybe. But definitely tomorrow. Feel out the situation. Tell her whatever the fuck happening inside him wouldn't leave him alone, despite his best efforts. Despite his best intentions. There was no talking the heart out of feelings so why bother? Lesson learned. The water shut off. A few moments later, Lex strolled out of the bathroom, towel wrapped around his waist. Morning boss. He nodded his way. Nice shiner. The black eye must be in full bloom. You look too damn perky for all those shots of Jameson you had last night. Lex shrugged. I'm a pro. What can I say? Travis slammed a glass of water and then filled another. Why are you up and around so early? I've got some plans. Lex pulled off his towel and stepped into boxer briefs. Gonna go grab lunch with my sister and then meet up with this girl from Tinder for dinner. Travis grinned. Another one? You act like I'm not single and ready to mingle. Just can't keep them straight, Travis said, chugging the last bit of water. This is the one who grew up in Barbados. Lex's cat-like grin promised mischief, and at least a few good stories. Her family owns helicopters or some shit. I'm thinking we could get freaky in the air. Travis snorted. Can't wait to hear this story when you come back. What about you? I'm gonna go to my mom's house. He ran a hand through his hair, wishing for some way to run into Amara sooner. Like now. Like the good boy you are. Lex pulled on a long sleeve shirt then dark jeans. Make sure you bring her a cherry pie and a bouquet of flowers. Yuck. Cherry pie. Travis pulled open the fridge to stare at the contents. Nothing spoke to him. She'd rather I brought a pack of cigarettes. Lex snorted. My mom is the same. No surprise we both turned out non-smokers. Travis wandered to the expansive black couch and sprawled out, staring at the ceiling as he contemplated what he'd do with his one sacred day off. Though he usually ended up working a bit, he fought hard to draw the line between business and personal life on this day at least, and to give his body one sanctioned day to eat whatever he wanted and do absolutely nothing. Even though he was already itching to do some push-ups. You wanna Netflix and chill until you go to lunch? Travis raised his brows suggestively, cackling as Lex gave him a dirty look. Please. I won't stain my purity before this Tinder date. Travis sighed, rolling onto his side and reaching for the remote control. Yeah well I will. Get out of here so I can jack off in peace. Lex snorted and shoved the rest of his clothes in his bag. I might stay at my sister's tonight. I'll ask her when I see her. All right, buddy. You know you can crash here too. He shrugged, face clouding over. I know. I appreciate it, man. But I gotta look for my own place. Shit with Jerrica is done for real, and now I'm just loafing. Travis gnawed on his lip, wondering what might be the best response. He'd never been a fan of Lex's girlfriend, so their sudden breakup was sort of a victory. She brought out the worst in Lex, he thought. You'll be good. It's for the best. Thanks. Lex offered his fist, and Travis bumped it with his own. Lex swung his backpack over his shoulder and jerked his head toward the door. I'm out. I'll see you tomorrow at work. All right. Peace. When the door shut behind Lex, Travis sank deep into the silence. Skitters of movement could be heard distantly through the walls, probably neighbors around him, normal noises he might never notice in his regular routine. He reached for his phone, sending a text to his mom to ask when he should come over. Be there after 12. I got an auction till then. It wasn't even 10 a.m. He had some time to kill. Phone still in hand, he pulled up Amara's string of text messages. 
at least five unanswered texts, all sweet and alluring, and he'd ignored every one of them. He reread each one for what felt like the billionth time, then opened a reply message. Fingers hovering over the keyboard, he wondered what he might say. Couldn't think of a damn thing that didn't sound desperate or awkward. He tossed the phone onto the coffee table, ready to settle into a mini veg fest. If he couldn't be productive, he'd be distracted. After a few hours of catching up on shows and dozing off, Travis awoke with a start, hunger gnawing at his belly. He grappled for his phone. 1 p.m. shit. He leapt to his feet to change clothes. He usually got there around noon so they could order takeout together. He pulled on black sweats and slipped a light jacket over his t-shirt. Grabbing his wallet and keys, he hurried toward the subterranean parking garage, texting his mom he was on his way. No response came. Odd. She was usually quick as a whip with her phone and liked to know exactly what was going on each time they planned a visit. In the dimly lit parking garage, the scent of fall was dry and sweet. His shiny black truck rumbled to life, and he peeled out, heading for his mom's apartment a couple of miles away. The day was gray and chilly, unseasonably cool for LA. He flipped on the heater and cranked some rock music as he drove, trying to zone out and not think about Amara, and what he might say to her later when he got the courage to text her. His mom lived in a newer condo complex, an upgrade she'd opted for a couple of years ago once Travis had offered to buy it for her. His UFC career had grossed a lot of cash, most of which he'd invested. But helping his mom get out of her old dingy box apartment, the place he'd been raised, was priority one when he hit financial stability. He parked the car and hurried up to the third floor condo, choosing the stairs instead of the elevator, one of his many sneaks during his day off. He turned the knob. Locked. He fished her house key from the mess on his keyring and unlocked it. Ma. He pocketed his keys, shutting the door behind him. It's me. He waited for her telltale greeting, I'm in the kitchen smoking but don't expect a ham. She was always in the kitchen because she always smoked, and it was the closest seat to a window. No greeting. He furrowed his brow heading into the depths of the condo toward the kitchen. Her purse and coat were tossed onto the couch, alongside a foreign coat. He knit his brow, pausing. Had she brought back someone? Did she have a new boyfriend? Some laughter, the undertones of a voice. Or maybe two voices. He pushed through the swinging half-door into the kitchen. His mom smiled up at him, eyes bright, her wispy blonde hair pulled back into a loose ponytail. At her side, Amara smiled nervously his way. Relief bloomed in his chest. Oh. Travis eased into the kitchen slowly, unsure how to respond. Hey. Didn't mean to interrupt. He had encouraged Amara to visit his mom, he just hadn't thought it would be on the same day he chose to visit her. Nervousness coated his insides. This was a strange blessing in disguise, if only he could look past the shock. My son. His mom took a last drag at her cigarette and snubbed it in the ashtray on the table. She leaned back, crossing her arms over her chest. You look like a model who got into a street fight. What's with this black eye? I can't believe you came out of me. He smirked, heading for the fridge, though he didn't want a damn thing in there. Amara's gaze sizzled on him. Mom, I look like this all the time doesn't mean I get sick of looking at ya. She laughed and coughed and laughed again. Turning to Amara she leaned in and said, all the other mamas wish they'd had a boy like mine. You should have seen it when he was growing up. Had to beat back Hollywood with a stick. Isn't that right, Travi? Travis rolled his eyes, though neither lady could see. He grabbed a beer from the fridge and cracked it open. Leaning against the counter, he ran a hand through his hair. You remember it this way, not me. His mom laughed again, eyes sparkling as she looked at him. Amara had been oddly quiet, which made him worry that their tiff the other day might have left her feeling awkward around him. God knows he felt awkward around her, only because he was so desperate to pin her to a wall and have his way with her. Her being in his mom's house was like logs on the fire. His mind clouded and went dark like a disappearing broadcast. 
Amara here came to visit me, his mom continued, reaching out to squeeze her shoulder. We've been having such a good talk. I'm so happy you took the time to meet with me, Amara said, her sweet voice making his heart hurt. It was so lovely to finally meet you. After a long swill at his beer, he reached between his mom and Amara to completely snub out his mom's cigarette, which had been still smoking on the table. You need to quit smoking. He took the ashtray and emptied it. The only downside of visiting his mom was the horrible stench, the way it stained his clothes and stung his nostrils for too long afterward. I will, I will. She waved him off. Someday. Let an old lady have her vice. After all I put up with from your father, I deserve it. Travis sighed, leaning against the wall, beer in hand. Okay, ma. Amara smiled at his mom, her plump lips snagging his attention. She looked different after only a few days apart, maybe because he'd erected a wall between them. One he was desperate to break down again. Well, I better get going. Thank you for taking the time to share so much with me. His mom pulled Amara in for a hug and a quick kiss on the cheek. You are such a good girl. The best there is. I wish my Trav could find someone like you. His heart wrenched again, an awkward heaviness appeared. Bittersweet since he had found her and wanted her, the one forbidden fruit. Amara laughed nervously and stood, reaching for a folder in her purse. I'll walk you out, he said, setting his beer on the counter. Their eyes met for the first time, and it was like an electric shock. She yanked her gaze away and headed into the hallway toward the front door. I can find my way out. She shrugged, grabbing her coat off the couch. The front door was right there. But thanks. No, I want to. His heart pounded, and he met her gaze hesitantly. Every minute since their encounter in the gym the other night had weighed on him, urging him toward calling her or reconciling somehow anything that might simply bring them together. But deeper than that, he wondered how much longer he could realistically deny these urges. They weren't going away, lessening, or getting easier. As she blinked up at him, he realized the time had come. She pulled open the door and stepped into the hallway. Once he shut his mom's door behind him, he kept pace beside her as they walked toward the stairwell in silence. Every passing second made the tension grow thicker, shriller. They descended the first story without saying a word. He swallowed a knot in his throat. After rounding the corner Travis raised his arm, propping his hand against the wall and blocking her path. Wait. She gnawed at the inside of her lip, avoiding his gaze. Don't block me Travis. I'm embarrassed and I'm really confused okay? What are you confused about? She hesitated. I heard your mom's story. All of it. I didn't realize you'd grown up with so much violence. Yeah. It's true. She shook her head, studying something on the floor. What's so confusing about that? I don't know. She looked weary, like she was tired of thinking about it. I guess I thought it would show more. Like I'd be an abusive asshole myself. I turned out nothing like him. Her proximity made his whole body throb from wanting her. He dipped closer. It's obvious. I just have questions and? I'm always available for you. She didn't look convinced. We're not allowed to be in the same room together, remember? I'm sorry about the other night. She knitted her brow. But shouldn't I apologize? I feel like the creep here, trust me. God this is so weird. He squeezed his eyes shut. A million thoughts clanked together, and he couldn't recall any of the previous objections to kissing her like he'd been dying to from the beginning. I didn't say something important that night. What was that? He bit his bottom lip, moving nearer to her. He searched her face for some truth, some sign that he should go down this path, consequences be damned. His gaze wandered down her cheeks, over her jawline, along the contour of her neck. With his free hand, he cupped the side of her face. She drew in a breath, and he swooped in to kiss her. 
Their lips met tentatively but hungrily, the first hesitant kiss turned into a confident second one, which melted into a passionate and desperate third. She made a small noise going weak beneath him. And then it was game over, fervent hungry kisses, one melting into another. He steadied her at the hips, bringing down his hand from the wall, fingertips searching out the sweet curve from hip to ass. When they parted she rested her forehead against his, drawing ragged breaths. Holy shit. Yeah. He dragged his thumb over her lips, mind dizzy and desperate for more. He'd avoided this rabbit hole, for a reason. Now he was finding out how right he was. She hooked her arms around his waist, bringing his body closer to hers. His eyes fluttered shut, resting his lips against her hairline. What changed? He drank in the scent of her, his throat tightening. It was time to say yes to you. Like I've wanted to since you came home. Why do you feel so good? Her voice came out a low murmur, so low he almost didn't catch it. It's not fair. You're right about that. He brushed his lips over her cheeks. Your brother will kill me. Before, it was a maybe. Now it's definite. He doesn't have to know. Her gaze met his, and she was dead serious, earnest and innocent. Fear spread through him but he squashed it. I don't know if I can do that. I can. He sighed, both perplexed by the suggestion and insanely aroused by all the different points where their bodies touched. Maybe she could feel his cock already. I shouldn't have come out here. Don't say that. Her brow furrowed and she looked like she might cry. This needed to happen. It was overdue. He laughed a little. And this will be it, right? Just a couple more kisses and nothing else. She looked at him with a gaze so sexy he could burst. You're crazy. Their lips met again, desperate and needy. He pushed his tongue into her mouth, and she met him there, sloppy and uninhibited and wild. She moaned through the kiss, and he pressed her harder against the wall, sealing their bodies, his cock jutting into her hip. You are so crazy, she whispered through kisses, if you think you can kiss me like this and that's it. Her vanilla scent wafted up to him, and heat flooded him. Desire made primal steps through his chest, and he hooked his hands behind her thighs, hoisting her against the wall. She inhaled sharply, fingernails digging into the back of his neck as their gazes locked at eye level. Now you've done it, she said, voice throaty. They kissed again, and again, each kiss reminded him of how stupid he'd be to think he could ever let this go unexplored. It felt natural, he murmured, kisses dotting her jawline and down her neck. Do you like it? Her eyes fluttered shut, and she nodded. More than I can even explain. He rocked against her once, pleasure shooting through him so hard he thought he might collapse. Her grip around his neck tightened, her breast smashed against his chest. I could have you here, and a million more times, and still want more. Travi? His mom's voice echoed through the hallway. Are you down there? He stilled, breathing heavily as he pinched his eyes shut. I'm here ma. Are you coming back up or what? One second. The door clicked shut, and he peeked through one eye at Amara, who watched him with a distant expression. You have to go. She ran a hand over his shoulder and down the length of his arm, like mapping his body to remember later. I get it. I don't want to. But I should. They stared at each other, neither moving to break the seal. She was divine from so close. Her scent was like a fine bath, washing over him in reassuring and titillating waves. He could spend eternity here, pressed up against her, her sweet soft body tucked safely in his arms. He pressed his lips to hers again, coaxed a needy kiss out of her. When they parted, he loosened his grip on her, and she slid to the floor. Have fun with your mom. She touched his chest, dragging her fingertips down the t-shirt, looking forlorn. Just message me. Or something. He covered the hand on his chest with his own. I will. Later tonight. She swallowed and looked up at him. I hope so. She went on her tiptoes and kissed him, then hurried out of the apartment building, letting in a whiff of cool air. 
He stared after her for what felt like an hour, replaying the memory of her in his arms, kissing him, the feel of her skin against his. Fuck. These were dangerous flames they were playing with. And already he was getting scorched. He'd never kissed a woman like that before. Those kisses would haunt him for the rest of his life. He trudged up the stairs, no energy to sprint or even skip steps like he normally would. His heart pounded, begging him to return to her embrace to prolong the contact. Before he pushed back into his mom's place, he fished his phone out from his pocket. He wouldn't let her wonder all day what his game plan was. I'm so happy you were here today. I've missed you. Slipping the phone back into his pocket, he re-entered the apartment with a smile. No matter how much guilt this maneuver kicked up, it felt right. And he was dying to see where it led them. Chapter 14 That evening, Amara was on high alert. She didn't wander farther than five feet from her phone, and she checked at random intervals to make sure that it wasn't, miraculously, set to silent mode for any reason. Just so she wouldn't miss a text or a call. Travis's kisses that afternoon had burned her, practically left char marks on her face that made it impossible to see straight or function normally. She'd wandered back to her house like floating on a cloud, almost wrecking the SUV once. He was a drug, and she'd finally gotten the dose she'd craved. During dinner, the text came. She and her mama had sat down to spaghetti with meatballs when the phone buzzed. She nearly choked on her garlic bread. Mama cast a quizzical look her way, and she chugged some water to smooth her throat before pulling up the new arrival. Wanna come over? Travis. Her pulse skyrocketed, and she twirled her fork in her spaghetti, thankful Eddie was still at work. Mama sniffed out the tension spike like a dog. Who is that? Nobody. She shoved the spaghetti into her mouth, chewing loudly, as her mama narrowed her eyes. Senor nobody, maybe. Are you doing the Tinder thing? She shrugged, swallowing hard. I'm seeing what's out there. Make sure you call on the phone once in a while. Mama sighed heavily, like the weight of today's problems rested on the lack of phone calls. And make sure he tells you the truth. Two most important qualities. Phone calls and honesty. She snickered, biting into her bread. But there was a stern warning buried in Mama's seemingly innocent request. Her father had been the biggest liar of them all. Amara was hesitant to admit that Travis shared her father's same fascination with MMA. I think he satisfies both of those already. Well, you let me know when it's serious. Mama sent her a flat look. I might be sick, but I still want to meet him. Her cheeks flushed. You won't be sick much longer. And I doubt it'll go anywhere. I'm not looking for anything. And why not? Amara didn't know where to begin. I just don't need anyone. I just want to have fun. The front door jiggled and then swung open. Eddie appeared in the doorframe, a backpack slung over his shoulder, the equivalent of a briefcase. Miho. Their mother wiped at her mouth with a napkin and waved at him. Eddie flashed the peace sign and shut the door behind him, then dropped his backpack on the couch. Just in time. He squeezed Mama's shoulder as he walked toward the kitchen, making a big display of sniffing the air. Poor Dios huele rico. Amara this was all you, right? She grinned, looking back at her brother as he fished out a plate and fork from the cabinets. She loved it when it was the three of them, with Eddie there to round it out. For all the ways he was her annoying older brother, he was the male rock of the family. He knew how to play that role, to dance that line between brother and father. And their family needed him now more than ever. It was more than just his income, it was his attitude at home, his support, his fierce protection that carried the three of them. He could just enter the room, and both she and her mother would sigh with relief. He had that in him, for better or worse. It sure was. She twirled her fork in the spaghetti again, watching as he sat down with a heaping plate. How was your day, Hermano? Good. Long. 
He laid his napkin over his lap and adjusted his glinting silver watch before he dug in. Today's event was good though. No hiccups. Mama reached out to squeeze Eddie's wrist. What about you two? Good day? Eddie looked up at them. They both nodded and Mama talked about some aches and pains she'd noticed. In lieu of offering her own details, Amara asked a question. Any plans for tonight? Eddie shrugged, getting a sly look that told Amara more than what their mama could catch. I don't know. Might drop by Holty's house, see how the boys are doing. Her stomach plummeted. Travis must not know about this if he'd invited her over. The meetup could never happen. Oh yeah. What boys? Him and Lex. Lex has been staying there for a minute. It's nice to have them both in one spot. Eddie slurped at a noodle, sauce flicking up to his chin. He wiped it off with his napkin. Amara reached for her phone, pretending to casually flip through it, wondering what her response should be now. Postponing the meetup seemed like a sin. But she couldn't risk a run-in with Eddie before anything had truly developed. If he ran into her at Travis's apartment, they might as well out themselves now. Ma, when's your next appointment? Eddie nodded toward the calendar on the wall. I think I have a gig that day. As her mama and brother discussed the upcoming week's schedule, Amara quietly finished her plate of food and cleaned up the kitchen. She cleared their plates once they finished, refilling her mother's water glass when requested, leaving the kitchen tidy when she excused herself to her bedroom. I'm going to do some work prep, she said, flashing a smile. Her brother nodded at her, crunching on the ice left over from his coke. Inside her quiet bedroom, she pressed herself against the door and pulled up Travis's text. I don't know if I should. Eddie just mentioned he was going to swing by your place later. Her heart pounded as she watched the dots appear that meant he was currently responding on his end. She barely breathed as she awaited the response. Fuck. A minute later he wrote, Are you coming into the gym tomorrow? Maybe that's the only place we can meet for now. She tapped out a quick response. Of course I'm coming in tomorrow. I've got all these problem areas to work on, remember? Grinning, she fidgeted as she waited for a response. One arrived quickly. I didn't see a problem anywhere on you. But I'll look harder. All over. Over and over again. She gulped, heat pooling in her core. The man would bring her to her knees if he talked like that all the time. Switching to her phone's camera, she lined up for a selfie, wondering how she could work the problem area angle. Something to tease him with, just the right amount. Slipping her blouse off, she held the camera so it showcased her shoulder area, with a generous amount of round cleavage and one pouty lip. She loved these games, at the same time they were so silly. She fired it off to him with the caption, Can you look here? I think it needs some attention. His response was lightning fast. Definitely needs all my attention. Promise we'll work on that tomorrow, babe. For as long as you want. The arrival of a pet name singed through her, made her stare at her phone with wide eyes for what felt like ten minutes. Babe? Oh hell yeah. She'd be his babe. She clenched her thighs as she reread his words over and over. What she wouldn't give to have him here, right now in a secret bubble so no one could know. They'd be free to explore and kiss and suck and press deep, no worries or interruptions. She sighed, pushing herself off the door to take a seat at her desk. We're called for now. The questions had no answers. But the quiet thrum of intuition led her down this path, a steady hand over hers, guiding her deeper into the delicious unknown. Chapter 15 Why are you hovering so much today? Maya, the weeknight receptionist, cast him a sharp look. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. You're not. He drummed his hands on the countertop, pretending to check out the schedule, then realized the peering was still the source of the problem. He just couldn't find anything else to do while he waited for Amara to show up. He ran a hand through his hair. I'm keyed up. 
It's a good Monday. That means you have to watch my every move? Maya's face held amusement, clicking to a new screen on the computer. Hey, I'm the boss. He snatched up a pencil, jabbing the eraser into her armpit. Maybe this is your yearly review. She laughed, replacing the pencil in its container. I don't buy it. You're waiting for someone. Am I? He couldn't keep his gaze from sliding to the front doors every five seconds. He was embarrassingly transparent. You're not usually so hover why when you're waiting for Eddie. And it seems like you sure are excited for whoever is about to walk through that door. He scoffed, shuffling through some papers in a file folder. Feigning interest in last month's membership report, he counted the seconds before he responded. I'm too busy for this conversation. Maya laughed sharply. You're no good at this. He tossed the papers aside. Fine. Think whatever you want. I'm just excited for something that's happening tonight. Maya lifted a brow. What's happening tonight? None of your business. The phone rang, salvation. Travis paced while Maya murmured their operating hours into the phone. It was six o'clock already. Amara said she'd be here no later than now. He could have gnawed through a rope at this point, desperate to see her walk through those doors and get her into his arms again. He didn't know how or where anything would happen. But it had to, and fast. Even if all they did was neck, he needed to drink her in. A car drove past the front door, and he cleared his throat, hoping it would finally be Amara. He'd only been waiting since their last kiss the day before. The front door opened, and her breathtaking figure glided in, trim black slacks, a tight rose-colored button-up tucked in, trendy sunglasses pushed back on her head. The world slowed to focus only on her as she strode nearer, a knowing smile on her face. Maya tutted at his side. So she's happening tonight, huh? He shot her a dirty look. Shut up. She's a client. Aha. Uh -huh. He and Amara didn't break eye contact as she came up to the desk, both grinning like fools. When she placed her hand on the countertop, he snapped back to reality. Hey there. He nodded, feeling Maya's smug gaze burning through him. How you doing today? Pretty good. She shrugged. They'd been texting all day, he knew exactly how she was doing. Wanna work out? Yeah, I thought I might. She had a shit-eating grin. The unspoken words between them were so thick, he thought the air might sag. Sweet. Follow me. He nodded toward the back hallway, eager to get her out of Maya's hearing range. When they were around the corner, he grabbed her hand. Her eyes lit up. Wanna see my office? She giggled. More than anything. This was the only game plan he'd come up with. Lock them inside his office for as long as it took to get a little bit of this tension out of their system. He dropped her hand before leading her through the small maze of offices and break rooms, nodding at some trainers huddled together in the planning room. This was a bold move but already he didn't care, not with hot desire thrumming through him. He brought back people to his office so rarely that Amara might as well be the president. He pushed open the white door leading to his office, gesturing for her to enter first. She strutted past, the scent of her hair wafting toward him. Inside she peered around, delight in her eyes setting her purse and gym bag down on the chair. Clicking the door shut behind him, he looked her up and down. You like it? She nodded. The fuck-me eyes were back. Bigger than I imagined. She lifted a brow. He backed her up against his desk. She inhaled sharply as their faces grew nearer. The pretty flecks of green and tawny in her eyes were like looking into a magic ball. He could stay here for days and want more. I want to pick up where we left off yesterday. He slid his hands over her waist and her eyes fluttered shut. She nodded, tilting her head back to look at him. Kiss me. He dipped down, covering her mouth with his, the fragrant scent of vanilla and soap mingling and exploding inside him, urging him deeper into the rabbit hole. 
Their kisses were fervent and noisy, like they both might wither and die if they stopped. He brought a hand to her neck, tracing the line there, then knotted his fingers at her hairline. He nudged her onto his desk. She slid back, eyes clouded and lips kiss-bitten which made him lose it. He traced the curves of her body through her work shirt, desperate to get underneath and see for himself. But he stilled himself, untucking the hem of her shirt with a reverent slowness. She hooked a leg around him, bringing their bodies closer, intensifying the heat. I've been waiting for this all day, she murmured, dragging her fingertips over the contours of his arms. Travis, I feel like I'm going crazy. He laughed softly, unbuttoning her shirt with trembling fingers. Me too. To all of it. He sucked in a breath when he saw the creases of her brown belly as he unbuttoned higher and higher. She arched her back toward him when the last button came undone, the shirt fell away to reveal a silken pink bra. He met her gaze, measuring his breaths to keep control. He was a second away from snapping. Touch me, she begged, her voice a pretty purr, one that he wouldn't mind hearing over and over again for as long as she'd allow. He slid his hand into the open shirt, over the sharp dip of her waist, the heat sliding off her in waves that made his whole body tense. Her skin was smooth, as silky as the bra, and he brought his lips to her collarbone, drinking her in, following the lush curve from chest to breast. He dragged his tongue over her cleavage, and she shuddered beneath him, arching closer. Can I take it off? His breath came out hot over her covered nipples, the two taut points beneath the fabric a beacon. He grazed his lips over each nipple, she laughed throatily, eyes half-closed. Please. He made quick work of the clasp, and the silken cage loosened. He pushed her shirt over her shoulders and down her arms, then slipped off each strap, her breaths low and shaky as he undressed her. Come on, Trav. Her voice was almost a whimper, she nuzzled his chest. I need it. She needed it, as much as he did. And if this was the case, they were both in trouble. He ran his thumbs over the tight points of her nipples and then slid the bra down, revealing heavy, lush tits. He growled and dipped down to capture a nipple in his mouth. She gasped and nodded her fingers in his hair as he lavished attention on each one. The second leg swung around his body, trapping him there, the most delicious prison. I want to eat you up, he murmured. Grabbing handfuls of her ass, he stood, grinding his groin against her spread legs. Her breath hitched, and he knew right where this was going. God help him, he'd fuck her on his desk every day until the end of time, if that's all they had to work with. Everywhere. He moaned low, crushing his lips against hers. Everywhere. I hope that's an invitation. He snagged her bottom lip between his teeth, sucking gently before releasing it. When they parted she looked drugged. So can I take these off? He tugged at her work pants, lifting a brow. You can't be real, she breathed as he buried his face in her cleavage again. You're too good. He laughed. What do you mean? You kiss like a fucking god. You wanna eat me out first thing and haven't even asked me to suck your dick beforehand. You're a fighter who's also a businessman and basically a model. She shook her head, eyes searching his face like she could find the answer written there somewhere. Your dick has to be tiny, right? That's it. That's the catch. His grin stretched ear to ear. He pressed his cock hard against her, rubbing it in a slow circle. Wanna see? Yes. She was in for a surprise if that's what she thought the catch was. He reached for his belt buckle, but she grabbed his hand. Wait. Take off your shirt first. Whatever you say. He tugged his t-shirt over his head, and then dropped it onto the floor beside her bra. She bit her lip, smoothing her hands over his pecs his abs, tugging at the tiny hairs on his breastbone. I've been wanting to do this for so long, she said, glancing up at him shyly. He opened his mouth to respond, but a knock sounded on the door. She gasped, pulling him closer, fear in her eyes as she watched him for a response. Fuck. He'd locked the door so there was no threat of anyone coming in, but talk about bad timing. He turned to shout toward the door. Who is it? Boss, I need your office for a little bit. It was Gio, one of the other trainers. 
It's the cert paperwork. Due by nine. He let the breath he'd been holding slide out of him. Required reporting to the state, and he'd totally forgotten about Geo's deadline. The test was long enough to require concentration, and of course his office was the perfect spot. He rested his forehead against hers, mulling over a response. Give me five. Okay, boss. Once a few moments had passed, Travis appraised Amara, feeling both torn and ravenous. The sweet slope of her breasts was a distraction. He let his thumb graze over her nipples, following the curve to her rib cage. She looked deflated, tracing her fingertips over his abs. Guess it's time to work out now, huh? She cracked a grin. For now. He cupped her cheek, snagging her lips in a kiss. I want you to myself later. Em? She returned his kiss, finding his tongue with her own. I'm all yours. He squeezed her thighs, sad to think he'd been only moments away from the prize. You kill me. Is that a good thing? He pressed his mouth against hers, the scent of her making him dizzy. These were bad signs he wouldn't be able to keep himself off her, no matter how messy the turnout with Eddie would be. The best. They shared one last long kiss. Then Amara made quick work of hooking her bra. He slid his hands over the warm curve of her waist as she buttoned up her shirt. How do you expect me to be able to concentrate on anything else tonight? She giggled, sliding to her feet. You'll have to make do. We both will. When she was ready to go, he opened the door. Geo stood on the other side, eyes wide. It's all yours. Travis breezed past him, positive this would raise eyebrows but unable to care since he'd been yanked away from the one truly delicious woman to cross his path in too many years. Out in the hallway, he gently pushed on Amara's hips toward the locker room. Go get ready. He winked. I'll be waiting. Cheeks flushed, she waved her fingers at him and disappeared into the women's locker room. The woman would bring him to his knees, undo every last ounce of his resolve. And there wasn't anything else in the world that he wanted more. Working out with Travis was the best of all worlds. Not only was he skilled and trained as a coach, he made her laugh while pushing her limits. And part of her love that he was at her side almost exclusively, while all the other women watched with heavy gazes as they progressed through their workout. It made tingles erupt over her entire body. Travis was addictive. He was clean and pure and sweet and firm. She wanted more of him, all the time. Even when he was beside her, grinning at her, poking her in the small of her back as they moved to a different machine. Give me more of this guy. The thought wandered through her head like a tourist. If Travis were some guy she'd met on Tinder, or at work, or downtown at the library, she'd be scrambling to see him all the time. Day dates, weekend dates, trips to the library, meeting the friends. The thought jarred something loose, a fear that popped like a blister and oozed all over, staining her excitement. This will go nowhere. Because it couldn't. Not with Eddie in the way. But what if Eddie weren't a problem? The idea of Travis being accessible, being hers, shuddered through her. But she couldn't tell if it was intrigue or aversion. Even though Travis was so good, she didn't want to want him. Didn't want to slide down the slope of growing affection and maybe even, God forbid, love. Because the slope was more than just slippery. It was covered in black ice and edged with spikes. By the end of their workout, Amara felt weak and jittery, though she didn't know if it was due to sexual tension or the true effectiveness of her workout. Travis leaned against the bench press scrolling through his phone as Amara tightened her shoelaces. Whatcha doing tonight? She fought a grin. He was chomping at the bit too. Dinner. With the family. Can I convince you not to go? No. It's our last night with Mama's appetite. What do you mean? She doesn't really get hungry, recovering from chemo. There's a small window where things seem normal again, which is now. Then she goes in for her last round tomorrow. I need to be home. Travis looked deflated. And what about dessert? 
You got anything planned? She laughed, looking him up and down. His persistence was admirable. Mostly bed. But it sounds like you have ideas. He cocked a grin. Plenty of them. Heat flooded her. It shouldn't be legal for him to look at women like that. It was dangerous. Let's try some of them out tomorrow. She lifted a brow. I'll come here after dinner. So we have more time. He followed her out of the weight room, giving high fives to a couple of guys as he walked by. At the back hallway leading toward the women's locker room, she turned to him, lips curled upward. You gonna follow me in here too? I would if I could. He stepped closer. Go change. I'm gonna get out of here. If I look at you a second longer without touching you, I'm gonna lose my mind. His words spread like fire through her. That sounds serious. Trust me it is. He nipped at her waist, pulling her closer. I'll see you tomorrow. Their lips brushed tenderly, and then he dived in for a sloppy tongue kiss. When they parted, she braced herself against the wall. Jesus. You're right. Get the fuck out of here before we do something indecent. He squeezed her hip. We'll talk later. She jerked her head in a nod, watching his sturdy square frame head back down the hall toward the front of the building, his gait measured and confident. As she pushed into the locker room, his words swirled inside her head. She was caught in the throes of the tornado he'd created. Chapter 16 Later that night, once dinner was digesting and all were resting comfortably in front of the TV, Amara's phone buzzed with a new text. Neither Eddie nor Mama stirred at the buzz. Their favorite series was on, and it was stronger than a drug for those two. Amara hung around mostly for the family time, and the occasional interesting plot point. She swiped her phone on. Travis had written. Can you talk? Staring at the TV, she counted down in her head before responding, swallowing her immediate urge to leap to her feet and run into her bedroom. Sure. She squashed the surge of excitement. Had to play it cool. No fangirling or squeals allowed during the tense scene, which continued to enthrall her mother and brother. Her phone buzzed with an incoming call, and the ringer sounded, one of her classic favorites from her childhood, Achy Breaky Heart. The name T-Holt showed on the screen. Panic leapt to her throat, and she watched the words with disbelief. He wanted to actually talk to her. Eddie shushed her, his eyes never leaving the screen. Turn that dumb ringer off. She swallowed, silencing the phone. Though her mama would be pleased. If only she could share it with her. Eddie sucked at his teeth, crossing an ankle over his knee. Thoroughly engrossed once more. She stood and walked casually to her bedroom, shutting the door behind her. Hello? Hey. How are you? Relief spread through her. Fuck, it was so nice to hear his voice. Especially after thinking about him non-stop since leaving the gym. Good. Surprised. I didn't realize you wanted to actually call. I wanted to hear your voice. I can't complain about that. She eased onto the bed, an evening with his soft tenor in her ear was better than the alternative. I was watching some TV with Eddie and Mama. Shit. Did I interrupt? I told you I could talk, remember? She stretched out, happiness flooding her. I'm not that into the show anyway. I'd much rather listen to you. I wish I could see you. Same here. Don't you have some sort of secret loft we can escape to? I've got all the secret spaces you want. You just have to escape first. She laughed. Fair enough. If you showed up at my door right now, I'd let you in. I hope so. Her cheeks hurt from grinning so much. Every word out of his mouth ignited her. But that's all you'd do? Please. That's step one. How many steps are in the plan? He hummed. About a thousand. 
Damn, that's intense. It'll take forever. That's fine by me. The connection rustled, like he was adjusting the phone. You're the kind of girl I want to spend a lot of time on. She buried her face in the pillow, stifling a squeal. Too much. He was too fucking much. Oh, am I? Makes it sound like there are other girls in the mix, too. Ha. Huh. Funny joke. Curiosity swirled inside her. She was desperate to probe this area of his personal life. What? I told you that night we had dinner, you must get so much pussy. I'm just being realistic. He clucked his tongue. Well, you're wrong. You don't bang all those cute secretaries you've got working at the gym. Her neck heated up. He laughed. Oh, please. I have a dick, but I'm not a creep. I have rules. She nuzzled into the pillow. Like what? He took a breath. I don't fuck coworkers. That's a good one. I don't fuck around, he added. So he's loyal. Okay. I always use a condom. Also good. The pieces were fitting together. Ladies come first. She lifted a brow. In what sense? You know what sense? Go on. Um, that's it. He laughed. Tell me yours. She twirled a piece of hair around her finger. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't have any. Liar. I expect a certain caliber. She studied the ceiling as she searched for the right words. That's all. Hmm. Great and neat. Exactly. She giggled. Get your sweet ass over to my house. His voice came out husky. I'll make it worth the trip. She looked at the clock, 10.30 p.m. way too late to be gallivanting anywhere for a booty call, especially on a work night. I can't. It would be so suspicious. He sighed. The next time I see you, I'm going to eat you alive. I hope that's a promise. Trust me, I'm not a fan of... Knocking sounded at her door. Before she could even respond, the door creaked open, and Eddie poked his head in. You still up? He squinted at her. You missed the ending. Eddie, I'm on the phone. She kicked her leg at him, though he was across the room. I know I missed it. Whatever. Who are you talking to? Does it matter? She resettled onto the bed. I'm talking to them. So bye. Maybe I want to talk to them too. She scoffed, heart racing. It's my work friend. We're talking about the schedule. Now get out of here. Eddie grinned. Night sis. He shut the door quietly behind him. Amara sighed, pressing the phone to her ear again. Sorry. So back to our chat about the schedule. She laughed. Yeah. About that. It's weird to hear Eddie from the other end. I always forgot growing up how protective he'd be of you. Until something happened and he'd snap. He's definitely the dad I never had. Her throat tightened. God love him. Which makes this worse. Travis laughed a little, then groaned. He's gonna snap. We'll figure that out later. She traced the stitching swirls in her quilt pattern with her fingertip. I'm just happy he didn't pop in here while I had my hand down my pants. That would have been harder to play off. She could feel the tension spike on the other end of the line. Say what? She giggled. You heard me. I want to put my hand down your pants. But only my hand is here. She rolled onto her back, letting her free hand wander between her legs. Maybe with the sound of his voice in her ear, she could imagine it as his hand. Im? I can work with that. The breathiness in his voice made her wonder if he'd started touching himself yet, 
Maybe he was hard already. Her pussy clenched with need, fuck she'd have a thousand orgasms from his voice alone. I don't want to be the only one doing the work. She sucked at her bottom lip, letting her fingertips graze the cleft of her pussy. You aren't. I'm right here with you babe. My friend showed up too. She squeezed her legs together. Is this the friend I almost met earlier today? The one and only. His guttural laugh rippled through her. Is he big and tall and hard like you? She bit at her lip, sauciness flowing through her like blood. Her thumb grazed her clit through her leggings, shivers coursed through her body. Ahem. He'll make you scream. Her eyes fluttered shut. As she opened her mouth to respond, footsteps sounded in the hallway. Eddie's voice grew nearer. She sat up, eyes on the door. Amara, come here a sec. Eddie's voice was muffled by the door. Fuck. She pinched the bridge of her nose. Disappointment tremored through her. Eddie's calling for me. She stood, trying to shake off the sexiness. I gotta go out there. Don't go, babe. His smooth murmur prompted a smile on her end. I'll call you back if I can. Hanging up right now is the last thing I want to do. He sighed. Go do your thing. And sweet dreams if we don't talk again. I know mine will be. Heat rose in her neck. Back at ya. She ended the call, holding the phone to her chest in a final long exhalation of elation. Eddie calling for her was so inconveniently timed, she worried he could sense her betrayal like sniffing out the dense atmosphere shift before a storm. He might not be suspicious, but what if he somehow felt it anyway? On a cellular level? She'd barely kissed Travis, and the guilt parade had begun. It could only get worse and yet so much better from here.